So I had to flip that live off and turn this one back on so that I could have my camera set like the normal face ways. Um, I don't like that side camera. Unless I'm trying to film longer form content. Yeah, I couldn't see the screen. Like, I couldn't see any of the chat. The chat just, like, disappeared. So, I'm gonna... But, you know, what I did do this time for the first time and, like, using my noodle is I enabled monetization <clears throat> before the live started. So that way I actually you know, the, you know, however long I'm here, let's say 26,000 people happen to come in and out of here. Better. Oh no. That sucks. What'd they do that for? Doesn't seem like a very good idea. <gasps> Are these actual cookies or is this just an empty box? <gasps> I have cereal too. I bet I have milk. Alright, well at least I know I'll starve to death. I got onions, I can make onion pasta again. That shit was so good. For dinner last night I caramelized onions in some butter and then damn it where's my jewel and then I tossed some pasta in it boy oh boy was it good what's that there it is Oh, 
Julia, maybe YouTube or Instagram. Mm. My email, my business email is heather at subliminallocks.com. No, I didn't go to the store. I'm going to go Friday. Every time I comment on this one popular YouTube channel, I get a reply from the creator or a heart from the creator. Maybe he'll watch my live streams one day. Julia, um, it'd probably be better to email me. Um... Heather at subliminallocks.com. But yeah, if you want to message me on Instagram, that way like I could verify who you are and stuff, that'd be super awesome. Hello, Lord Gary, executive producer. My uncle is actually an executive producer for Law and Order. Sorry, my uncle's brother. I have refined the triple guitar pick since last video, so let me introduce the 100 pick guitar pick. And anyway, here's biblically accurate Wonderwall. Actually really do not like smoking cannabis. Stop it! You know, like, <coughs> what do we expect from a company that made Ren and Stimpy? Motivates to all. I had actually a really, really hard week. Um, but you know how it's been the last couple of months. So, um, but uh, I think what I've come to realize is, so something that like, I've kind of been talking about it openly the last few days. Um, something that I don't really talk about very much. And the reason I don't talk about it is very much is because I genuinely believe out of sight, out of mind. And that, like, a lot of the times if you focus on something, it's gonna like, bother you more so like I have been kind of just like trying to essentially not think about the fact that like but I was diagnosed last year um the beginning of last year it's like it's been like a year um I was diagnosed with uh Lyme disease well I guess I was my are we back okay so um anyway so I just haven't really thought about it a lot and um something that I've realized is that I have been having like a really intense flare up from the Lyme disease the last couple of months. And in conjunction with the fact that there's something, you know, with this eclipse, there's really something energetically that's been going on. And so like I was talking to my friend, the girl who I want to team up with my friend wind. Um, and I was like, we were talking about, um, 
what's been going on and she was like she's like I literally she's like I've give up she's like I quit I totally just gave up on everything on life she's like the last couple of weeks she's like I just literally quit every chore that I had to do all the responsibilities she's like I just literally just stopped one day and just sat down you know and she's like and I've just been doing that she's like I feel like such a piece of shit and I was like dude I'm going through the exact same thing but you know what I've realized is that I'm not doing anything that my body is not asking me to do and we need the rest. We need the rest. We need rest. We, we're working ourselves to the bone. We both do the exact same thing. We're both single moms living off grid in a school bus with our kids, uh, using composting toilets, and we, we're going through exactly the same thing. And um, so I was like, dude, you're not, you're not, you've not given up. You're giving your body the rest that it needs. Like, stop don't be such a defeatist about this, you know, trust that you're just honoring what your body needs you to do. And, you know, you, you've come to a place where you realize that your prior, the priority is your mental health over whatever obligations that you may have had. And she was like, dude, she's like, I love talking to you. She's like, you, you make me feel better. But so, you know, I like was, we were, I was talking to her about all this stuff and, um, what we've kind of figured out, I think ultimately is um we're gonna see if she can get here for the eclipse she's gonna try to get here for the eclipse so we're gonna try to get her here and if possible pick up elliot as well at some point between now and monday and uh yeah well so you know like this whole thing is like we're ending a cycle of like 2200 2024 year cycle you know since the death of jesus um everything that's happening on this eclipse happened at the time of his death and like whether or not you believe that jesus is the son of god or not it's still in a very sacred special time in general because it's a full cycle you know what i'm saying and it's all it's coming to uh, like it's coming to uh, we're like right there at the very end essentially you know we're like right there at the very end at the tail end of this like bullshit that the world has been going through and now we're going to be the ones people like wind and i um and we're going to be the ones that get to enjoy the like the vacuum that all that this chaos is going to create politicians are going to lose sta stature hollywood individuals are going to lose stature more puff daddies are going to come out all the big players are going to get exposed epstein you know they haven't all these people haven't been exposed because if they actually exposed everybody that was like in epstein's black book and puff daddy's uh whatever if they actually exposed all because there would be so many people in government positions that would be like taken out of their job that there would be like so many fucking jobs needing fulfilled you know and so the same thing goes for like hollywood the banking industry uh, tech bro uh industry all this stuff right so if we were actually to like expose these people and arrest them and remove them from society right uh we would there therefore create a huge vacuum uh where there's like so much that needs filling and people like wind and i are gonna be there to fill the vacuum we're just gonna right in there because we are a step ahead of everyone else if these assholes shut the grid down guess what me and her know how to survive we'll live longer than your the average bear and she's really resilient she would figure out how to get here it might take her a month or two but she'd figure out how to get here and if the two of us if she's not already here and the two of us, if the two of us were alone and society fell apart in the woods, dude, we'd totally be just fine. We'd be just fine. Because between the two of us, we fucking got this shit. My bestest friend, Wind, that I never get to see because we live exactly the same life and she's just doing it somewhere else. <laughs> But her property, she's getting rid of her property too. And she's going to be trying to like save up extra money this coming season. She does festival-y things. She like travels for festivals and sells things. But really, she's just decided the same thing that I am. I'm just chilling the fuck out and doing absolutely nothing until after this eclipse. I'm just going to wait. 
and I'm just going to see what happens for the eclipse. I think on the eclipse, I'm going to do some rituals uh, that are just like good for my mental health. Like I think I'm going to do like a ritual washing in the creek. And I think I will do like, um, uh, like a, uh, what is it called? Like just self care. Just like, I'll, I'll like tweeze my eyebrows. I'll tweeze my chin. I will exfoliate my skin. Maybe I'll put some self tanner on or something. You know what I mean? Just, I'll, I don't know. I'm just going to like make myself feel a little bit less, uh, like, you know, uh, a troll in the woods. And so I was telling Wind that she needs to do the same thing. Wind is fucking gorgeously hot. She just literally doesn't give a fuck about that kind of stuff. And so she, she, that's why I was like, we needed both, like, we need, we both need this. We both need to, like, do self-care. Like, we do. Like, that we're going, when this eclipse comes out, we need to be ready. You know what I mean? Like, once the, the, the liars are gone and all the manipulators and all these people are fucking finally gone, people who are, are good people, you, we need to be ready. We need to be ready to move when, when our opportunity presents itself. You need to be able to jump in and take it. You can't, you can't just, like, sit back and just wait and just, like, watch everything, you know, whatever. You gotta be, like, ready to go. Get yourself, embody the persona, the energy of that which you wish to be in the future. You have to be it, you have to vibrate like that shit, you know, if you want to attract it. Dude, I know Jax's mom. I'm so stressed out about that, to be quite honest. Hi, Proctor Kids. Yes, I did go live yesterday. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on some of these comments. No, I don't think Jesus is coming, but I think that in the sense Jesus is coming, like you got to think of like Jesus, in my personal like, per opinion, I don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. I believe that Jesus is like a, a very important uh allegory for us to take to heart and it's a it's a very important lesson and, it, and it's a lot more like the 33 years of Jesus's life aligns with how many vertebrae we have the like the his death and then the rising again actually correlates with the way that our spinal fluid goes through the 33 vertebrae up into our brains in our pineal gland and how it travels back down again so like there's a lot more to the story of Jesus than than what we really really know um, because a lot of us have just only ever just listened just to what Christians said, and that's all we ever listened to. What the fuck? Hold up. Wait a minute. There is some kind of fucking bug in my pants. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't put these pants on since the summertime, apparently. It was one of those daggum, pokey-ass hitchhiker things, and it touched me, and I grabbed it, and then I heard a crunch sound, and I was like, oh my god, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking spider. <sighs> anyway, so, um, I believe, um, I believe that... There's more to these things than we really understand if we've only ever narrowed our studies down to one thing. I think it's important for us to like expand our minds and look at things in more of a metaphorical way because the stories that, that were, are, we know today to be like biblical written fact, these stories were verbal tales for a really long time before they were ever written down on scrolls and then those scrolls like stored somewhere like the fucking library of Alexandria. I don't know, I'm just spitballing, but you know how like the Dead Sea Scrolls were hidden away, and that was supposed to be a part of the Bible, but at the Council of Nia Messia, Constantinople, and everybody, like, got together, and the Catholic peoples all got together and, like, decided, okay, we're going to put this in the Bible, we're going to put that in the Bible, we're not going to do this, they're not going to do that, and that's when the Dead Sea Scrolls were, were, were scuttled away, but how many other scrolls like that that say more about religion and, and the human experience 
and spirituality that we have no idea exists because the Catholic Church got a hold of it and put it away and won't ever let us see it because it's sacred text, you know? So there's just a lot of things that we haven't actually been told. That all being said, this eclipse, okay, the eclipse that is happening on the specific day that it's happening with the comet that is it, that is happening and all these other factors that have just so happened to be coming to alignment on this exact same day that only the last time that that really happened was at, in Christ's time like when he on the day that he died or whatever when he was risen again in that little that's that that, that eclipse that happened when he died that's this eclipse like it's it's this so it's important for us to like go into this with the absolute trust and faith that this is exactly what this world needs kind of like how like covid sucked but how many people like woke up to what the fuck was going on from covid how how much did we actually like fuck their game up the government's bullshit by by them overplaying their hand and that's exactly what is happening like with right now they're rushing to get everything done and like all the truths are coming out cat williams said it i mean the johnny depp and amber heard trial was a really good indicator of like you know these dominoes starting to fall and truths starting to come out and shit so like it's crazy dude it, it's 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 a time to to go we need to go into this with faith and gratitude and try to eliminate the, you know, the baser things from yourself. Go into this with a high vibe. Listen to music that, oh, go to my link tree in my profile, my bio here on, on YouTube. There's a link tree. If you go to my link tree, there is a Spotify uh, list, uh, playlists or whatever. Go find, my, go find my Spotify playlist called I Am Abundance and listen to that playlist if you are having a bad day, if you want have to do a job or clean or do something you don't want to do, put that shit on. And I swear it will lift your spirits. It will make you capable of doing all these kinds of things that you just didn't think you could do. And it will make you feel like a better person. And because you're, you'll start singing along eventually, you won't be able to help yourself because the shit is just so good that you will be literally saying a mantra of positive things that you want to call into your experience. Like this is, it's kind of like, you know, you buy a yellow car, you notice yellow cars. You start talking about good shit, good shit starts happening. You start noticing more good shit. So it's, it's one of those things, you know, you gotta, you, we gotta go it. We, we have to all know that it's not going to be the apocalypse. If, if anything happens and the grid goes down, they've done something without a shadow of a doubt, because it's, this is not anything like we have like what, like five or something eclipses a year. And then like the government has shot rockets into a lot of, a, a lot of eclipses at this point. They just did it to the lunar eclipse and they've done it to a solar solar eclipse in the past. They've been doing it for years. So like that, like I do not anticipate anything crazy unless, you know, this is really like Nibiru and the government's been lying to us. It's not an eclipse. But I mean, everybody that has knowledge of the stars, the astrophysicists and astrolog astrologists and such, uh, astronomists, uh, not astrologists, but uh, yeah, astrologists too. Um, they all say, yeah, this, this eclipse is, is, is on time. It's supposed to happen at this time. So like, I don't necessarily think that maybe the government is lying to us and it's Nibiru coming close. I mean, I, that could possibly be happening, but if it is true, we're going to find out about it this coming year and next year. Well, they well if they did announce that, don't cap. I wouldn't surprise me, considering the experiments they're trying that they're doing with CERN. Um, supposedly, uh, you know, there's like rumors about a creature that they've been able to essentially like make a portal to in CERN, um, and that this creature it's uh, it was prophesized by Alistair Crowley in the like you know and he's the world renowned satanist he said that the that in at this time um awas would 
would is a demon and that awa would or it's a i w a s s but so it's just crazy the way that it sounds like ai and um this they've they've definitely made some kind of like connection with something at cern um as far as like messing with us and you know as far as like Man mandala effects and stuff or mandela effects um i don't really believe that that is accurate in the sense that we think it is i believe that our government has been systematically fucking with us and changing things and like corporations are definitely in on it and um like the fruit of the loom they're in on it and i think that they've been doing that to kind of test our ability to notice things and to just kind of like start the start the the like to see if what they could get away with when they start to rewrite write stories from our actual history to make things look a different way just like in 1984 Yeah, interdimensional beings. They, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. They said that they've they've actually made connection with another dimension. Planet X. Yeah, that's what Nibiru is. But so also, um, in like the early '90s, they discovered a uh, a star in our sky. They call it like a dark star, but that's not actually what it was. It was a twin sun. You got to realize that in our in our dimension. In our world, balance, it's, there's, 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 there's a uh, yin and yang. There is masculine, there's feminine, there is, um, you know, there's up, there's down, there's, there's opposite and e they're equal opposites and they balance one another out. Okay. That's how our world is. So it would make, system is called, but that, that means that, that means two. So apparently this other sun it only really goes into our, um, into our, uh, like, uh, uh, we can't see it because it's dark. It, like, instead of going supernova and then becoming a black hole, basically this became, like, a hard, small, compact, very dense, uh, you know, like, hard-to-see thing. But they've developed the technology to be able to calculate it and size and everything. And so, apparently, it's rotation or it's it's um what's it called the it's like thingy that it does i can't remember the word right now i'm wanting to say rotation but you know you get what i'm saying they have that word um when it does it's it's thingy around it takes five thousand years holly my freaking playlist i love that playlist so much Lucky Schmitz, uh, if you, you should look into Dr. Stephen Green. Um, so this guy, he's been, ascent, he's been literally connecting, like communicating with like aliens, interdimensional beings for the last, like probably 30 years, 25 to 30 years. And he does so by getting at least three people together, going into the mountains and going way up and to where you have a really good clear view of the sky. And they, um, and they literally all, you, they like are able to meditate and communicate and, and, and it's, it's crazy. St Stephen Greer, his name is Stephen Greer. Look into his, his work, Stephen Greer. It's crazy. Man, Cardi B has had a lot of plastic surgery. You would think that she would, like, get to the point where she gets scared of, like, going under. Like, don't, she has kids. Doesn't she care? You could die under anesthesia. Yeah, Stephen Greer. He's really good stuff. Um, and it's just like, either way, like, it doesn't matter if he's doing it or not. It's still just fascinating to like, to, you know, like, 
It's kind of like when you watch a movie and you get into the movie. It's the same kind of thing. It's just like, it's really interesting. It's interesting to get into it, you know? Hey, Melissa. Dude, I want to... So, Wind and I, my friend, uh, we want to... Uh, so, she's really good at filming videos. And ed she's good at editing videos and doing voiceovers. Which is uh, complementary to the la my lack of ability in doing that. But I am good at, you know, working the social media thing. So told her that we need to team up because as soon as we do we'll be able to make really cool videos and because my youtube analytics are just out, out of control right now like i just looked at my um analytics and for the last 28 days i've had um 500,000 people in my view in my chat and like my first month of monetization, my first month of monetization, so for the entire, I, I monetized my account officially, was approved, started making money officially March 1st. And uh, for the entire month of March, I made $320 um, for YouTube. I don't have a newest conspiracy theory. I get, I mean, I'm kind of always been on to the same crap I've been on to. I mean, I guess maybe Israel. Like, the crap that, that I didn't really realize was, like, attributed to Israel um, that I'm finding out about. That, that That's pretty interesting. A little conspiracy theory to dive down into.
on it in a little while. Beep -a -doop -a -doop. <sighs> but anyway, so I think that it would be so much fun when her and I get together. Because when we do connect, then we'll be able to make good content. And it will be inspiring to other women. Mm, I should shove it a little bit more. I'll put some paper towels over there or something. Seriously, it's still fucking frozen. Is it working? Is it working? If it's working, please like this stream so I will unknow. I will see a movement in some shape. Because I can see every comment. I've been watching all your comments this whole time. Sweet, guys. Don't forget about the thumbs up. The thumbs up like in the the main area of the stream it like helps me um immensely a lot of my view videos like it's just weird because like i mean i get i get it because it's like a live and when you're on the phone and it pops up like it you try to like it the same way you would normally like it harding the screen right but like so what ends up happening is i get like all these views and like five likes <laughs> I am. Come on now. You're sweet, but you know that you know the drill. Um, Ace plays. No, I do not believe that's going to happen because I believe that humanity is waking up at rapid fire pace right now. Every time I go live, I'm waking up maybe one more person. And um, through that, enough people, not just me obviously, but people are waking up in record numbers every day. Uh, dozens and dozens and dozens wake up even further. Uh, and the more that these assholes show themselves at how they're trying to launder money through war, and how you know there's just we're getting attacked from so many different angles um from the people in power um and they want us disen disenfranchised bewildered and just giving up in a place of giving up so we can't do that we have to have faith in god we have to have faith that the things that were prophesized will come to pass we just have to trust Thank you, Pedra. Thank you, Heather. Mm -mm. 
Uh, my day is going good. My day is going good. I support an adult's right to do what they want with their own self. Yeah, I'm pro-choice. Yeah, Dylan, it's because I have blonde hair. Naturally. I just took an anti nauseal medicine like five minutes ago. Zofran. Two minutes ago. <laughs> MB, oh my God, I love you so much. Right? Right? Ugh. God, can you imagine how the men who were alive during the Civil War would be like how they would react to us right now? Like. Um, Haley, I don't like filming content. I like being live. I like going live. This is my favorite way of uh, not only like generating like an online income, but like, cause I don't really, I, I'm not like your tip, the typical live streamers. I'm not sitting here going, okay guys, come on, don't forget super chats. Like, don't forget, like you can give me, you know, like what is it the shit on TikTok called uh, gifting or whatever? Cause I, it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't, so um, I just like trust that people will either decide to give me super chats based on the fact that they either they've gained something from my content and you know um, I'll remind people that I have them available every now and again but like it's just not something that I just feel comfortable doing I just anyway. but I like um, I like live streaming I much prefer doing this to filming content because I can film the content while I'm live streaming and like I have interaction when I'm not I don't like talking to the camera if there aren't people on the other side you know if I if there aren't people there like who am I making eye contact with you know I'm trying to talk directly to you guys <laughs> all right I am have a good day thank you again for the super chat Guys, one of these um, really big time YouTubers just went to go visit my fucking family heritage people, the Sammy people. Let me show you. So I am um, indigenous Norwegian. That's the my native heritage. Today, uh, I travel deep into northern Norway to spend a few days with reindeer herders. To be a reindeer herder is unique. This family has been herding untamed reindeer for generations and it's no easy task. This is like what my gen As I get to this know is what like 40% or 50% of my genes wedding. genetics Everybody's are. Been super kind. Snowmobile for hours into the wilderness. Niels is about to teach me how to drive a snowmobile. She's and the YouTuber. It's really like to live as a reindeer herder. And she's I visiting am them. very passionate about reindeer herding. There aren't many reindeer herders like this left in the world, and this is one of the few videos on YouTube that show their lifestyle. So I'm very honored to share it with you. Welcome to Winter Wonderland. <laughs> this is Norway. And uh, I stayed at this campsite last night in my truck, and uh, it was really, really cold. The reason why I know it was really, really cold no, is because not really. everything I am. is covered in frost, including the inside of my tent. All right, let's fast forward to okay. a wedding in the traditional Sami dress. We consider ourselves as one people. We are not too many, but we don't have any exact numbers from 80,000 up until 150. But let me just say that I had not expected to go to a wedding on this trip, so my choice of outfit was limited to whatever was clean. I mean, imagine being a bit of an introvert. Going to a wedding where you don't speak the language, you don't know anyone, 
and you are the most underdressed person in the room. <laughs> yeah, but my this people like are good. An introvert's worst nightmare. <laughs> But okay, so let's fast forward. Like so let's look at the people. Girls to to use the headwear. Okay. So when they come inside, they will they will remove the hat. The women, when you're married, then you're expected sort of to to wear it. We try to teach the girls to to use the headwear because it's like a part of making the outfit complete. Yeah. Myself, I feel right. like so I... let's look at what they do. Years time. Okay. Yeah. Are you excited? I am very excited. What do you like about Randy Hurting? Everything, almost everything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Some things are... Uh... Okay. Henry and Nils are out here. So they like Wait, literally... just got three to get. Fucking just like... Heard Henry these dark star and reindeer. On his first lasso throw. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. Yeah, he's a, he's a skillful uh, lasso thrower. Oh. My son. He got it from me. He got it from me. Of course he did. <laughs> so what are we doing here? We put this... Uh, the Isn't this cool? For I haven't gotten to see like change. an up close view. That's you. my little brothers. So oh look, the reindeer ear notches. It's like my dad. Prince. No one, no one has like the same. There are no two identical earmarks. Uh, this is my father's earmark right here. And then the chat has never I been this quiet before. I just make one little change, and that's my little brothers. Ooh, so that is the right ear, and this is the left ear. Yeah, this is the left ear, and this is the right ear. Wow. Okay, that's a very subtle difference. Yeah, but there can also be like a little bigger differences. For example, this mm -hmm. is my grandmother's right here, mm -hmm. and this is my uncle's. I also have to say. Okay. So, oh, they have an app for that too. And uh, we used to say that joy never has a beginning or never has an end. <laughs> like, like a river. For much of the 20th century, the Sami culture was threatened by the politics of so-called assimilation in Sweden, Norway and Finland. The Sami were prevented from speaking their own language and living nomadically with their animals. Many families were displaced and resettled in this other areas. This is when my family... Things are changing for the better today, but there are other new threats now. So the last 15, 20 years, it has been the climate change. We see that uh, the, uh, the weathers are, are more... It's more warmer winters, much more windy, the pastures are, are getting like destroyed from the mild weather. So you can go visit these more more, uh, guys. Grazing. Questions. I want to do that. How cool then. would that be? A YouTube video and where she, I go and no, visit them seven, and right, do reindeer I, herding. I, of course, I was with my father at the herd and I had my own alone. Was me. Reindeer meat. Look at this big old jaw. Nom, 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 nom. So, anyway, that. That is, uh, those are the people who I am genetically related to, uh, through my, uh, ancestry. And, uh, I sent that video to Elliot and Josh the other day and I was like, make sure Elliot watches this. You know, I want him to, you know, to have a little view into like where the, where our family comes from. There it goes. It asked me to reconnect that time. Last time it went out, it didn't ask me to reconnect at all. I had to, like, close out the app, like, 30 times. Oh, yeah, Petra. That's her newest video. It just came out, like, the day before yesterday, I think. If I had to choose between crack or meth, what would I pick? Uh, probably crack, because... Um, I've never done meth, and so it scares me. I have smoked crack before when I was, like... 25 or something like that I was really stupid and I was drunk and someone dared me to do it and so I did um but uh yeah the fuck my dog is trying to find one of his buried treasures I'm 
Darius, really? I just saw Danny make a comment in the Discord. I mean, it's a child. <laughs> it's so funny when people say that kind of shit to me when I actually have, like, a closer connection to God than probably they do. You know what I mean? Like, an, a legitimate... A legitimate connection to God. Nope. I don't Z Han. Z Shan. This channel is about me. Me, myself, and I. Eventually, it's going to... It was started out as a dreadlock. Predominantly me showcasing my dreadlock work. As a... Dreadlock maker. And maintainer. Um, I don't know, Gingy, you're here, you're here. Ooh, here we go. There's the scoop. I'm gonna watch this later when I'm not on here, but did you guys hear that Russell Simmons, um, left the country, um, to escape me too, getting me too'd? Dude, the ghost within, right? That's exactly what I mean. Later, potato. So some things that I want to do on my channel there here for real moving in the future. Once I can, once, once I hit like a little bit more money, like uh, the amount of money that I generated for the month of March, um, definitely was not like enough to, um, to do anything really cool, but I'm going to use the money regardless to reinvest in YouTubes. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and get, uh, I already got a couple of little microphones. Um, I might just take my son on like a whitewater trip or something like that. Um, or maybe go somewhere like interview one of my friends who has a really cool business or there was something else that I was thinking about doing that I can't remember now what it is. Oh yeah. My friend wind and I, um, doing something together. Maybe going on, like, a trip. But I want to use the money to... The money that I make on YouTube and... And try to, like, reinvest into my channel so that I can... Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to get a freaking laptop. Bad. I need a laptop so that I can live stream and then like have the stuff on the screen, you know, the like, like a newscaster would do, you know, how like all the live people, there's like their face and then the stuff they want to show you. I want to do that. I want to be able to like do things and talk about court cases and stuff like that with you guys. Um, I'm based. I mean, Hitler was definitely a raging lunatic the more he got involved in methamphetamines, but 
where he started out was uh, basically eradicating the Rothschilds from Germany because they were trying to take over the banking in the um, the banking industry and the pol political arena uh, through like lobbying and shit. So after Hitler evicted the Rothschilds from Germany, they went to the United States and said, "We want a billion dollars so that we can create Israel." And so that's what happened. So the Rothschilds in the United States created Israel, and here we are. But, so, we're just right back to square one, back to World War again. Because the Rothschilds felt like they deserve more than they get. Dude, Sean, listen. You should really look into what the Jewish people were doing in Germany before Hitler. And it's really weird because when you look at like newspapers from like way back when, even Jewish newspapers from like before Hitler, um, the Jewish people were already trying to get money from um, the United States to like create a, a state like Israel. And this was like six years before Hitler even came to power or anything. And... Um, it was the Russians, the Bolsheviks. Look into what happened in Russia with the Bolsheviks. And then you'll understand why kind of what happened with Hitler happened. I can't really talk about it too much, Sean, because like uh, on here, but I could talk more about it on Bego. Uh, uh, you can't YouTube this information, Blanca. You should probably, you have, first of all, you have to be able to kind of understand like how to research stuff on the internet today. So you have to kind of be able to know who to trust, who to suss out, like what's absolute crazy talk and what is realistic evidence and what isn't. Um, but I recommend going to Twitter and look for the AI translations of Hitler's speeches. So what the AI does, all the AI does is it translates it to English. And so it's in Hitler's voice, but with like a German accent. So you're hearing Hitler speak in a German English accent. Or you're hearing, hearing him speak English with a slight German accent, but you can understand everything he's saying. And so, uh, and there's plenty of people who I went and checked the, the comment section to make sure that there's no like German people in there saying, hey, it doesn't say that, or hey, no, that's not right, or no, that translation's not right. You know, I went and did my due diligence. So, um, so uh, I recommend doing that. I recommend going and starting on Twitter, go on Twitter and look and see uh, what is what these what these speeches were about what's the reason oh 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 honestly if you what you should do is also read read hitler's book just read his book what did he say what were his literal words he left his his whole everything behind no one's fucking read it you know why because we all think hitler's evil and we don't want to be caught reading a book like that and that's what they that's what they wanted. They wanted us to self-segregate, they want us to self-censor, they want us to to keep our little selves in check. Okay, let me um I'll do it after I get off the live. I was gonna I need a text. I'm gonna send Wend a little bit of money so that she can get her tires fixed so that way um she can pick up Elliot and come here for the eclipse. But yeah, so um, it's just really wild, the shit that's been going down. And, like, Israel is not a state of, like, ethnic Jews that have, like, you know, they're literally Americans and they're, they're like, white. Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of, of whatever, he wasn't even born Netanyahu. He was born, like, Milikowski, and he's from fucking, like, Connecticut or something like that.
Um, I will get my truck fixed, but my truck is going to cost a significant amount more than her tires would, and she's already close to where Josh is, so she could easily pick Elliot up on her way here, and I trust her. I trust her. So, Poland, that's right. He will, he's from, but he, like, grew up in fucking, uh, he went to school or whatever in Wachikajigger. But yes, he is Polish. That's right. Thank you for that. But his last name is like Mil Mil Milkowski or something like that. The man's not even a freaking... It's not like he's a Jew. Like ethnic Jew. Like from the area. You know what I mean? Like he's 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 not. The Palestinians are from that area. It's not fair that just because 2,000 some odd fucking years ago you had people living in that area, but like for the last 2000 years, these people have lived there. So what does the people who are living there right now have anything to do with 2000 years ago? They don't. So you don't have the right to just take the land over. You just don't. And it's fucked up too, because like, I thought that like where we were in the world, like we kind of had established, okay, like we're not going to do that kind of shit anymore, you know? So it's just baffling how this is allowed to, be, to go on. My eclipse plan is to do a ritualistic washing ceremony to cleanse myself of the last time before. And then I will, I don't know, tweeze my eyebrows, you know, do a little dreadlock maintenance. Um, and then uh, I'll probably fast and pray, probably. We're only going to get, like, maybe, uh, like, if the sun, we'll get, like, like that. I'm all the way in Oregon. I don't have a very good view of the sun anyway from where I'm at. Just, we don't get a whole lot of, it's just, it goes right here. So, I, I mean, I, I, it depends. Actually, it, the time of day, I might actually, nah, I can't see the sun. I don't have the glasses yet. Oh, I gotta go over there and get those glasses. I'll get them on Friday. Sean sent some glasses. Some, what you call it, glasses. I know, Elias, I saw that too. I know, I saw that too. And so here's the thing. First of all, I have never believed Michael Jackson was a pedo. Never, not for one fucking second have I ever believed that. That man is not that type of person to do that. He is like, in, he, he probably has a hard time even having intimate relationships with women as adults, you know, just in general because of the fact that he's, I understand because I have trauma from people messing with me as a kid and shit. So, like, I understand now as an adult how it's kind of like, I'd just really rather not be touched. The eclipse is a symbol. It's not, it's not like only going to affect like just the place that it covers. That's not like how that works. It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole other thing than that. <laughs> well, you know, you have to be a noticer. It's important that we notice things. We cannot just continue to like keep looking at our device and keep in our little boxes without view of the sky you know, in our foggy, smoggy cities where we can't even fucking get past the no low light pollution. And, you know, a, you, we need to take a moment and like, and, and, and go literally, literally, literally touch grass. That shit would be so good. 
How do you make those eggs that they have in, you know, those freaking eggs that they put inside of uh, the pho? You know, they're, they're called like a souvlaki egg or something. What the fuck are those things? I want one. Looks like the fire's still going. I want one of, I want to make those little, e those eggs that they put, you know, that it's like, it looks like it's been so soaked in soy sauce or something, but it's not just soy sauce. It's like soy sauce and something else. What? Yeah, my eye color is real. It's green. Uh, YouTube shorts for you. Um, I do not support any movement of any kind. If it becomes a movement, I am immediately no longer, I'm immediately skeptical of anything they have to say. I don't do movements. Movements get culty. The eclipse is a sign from God, not a warning. It's a sign from God. It is a reminder that everything is cyclical, that what is it, it, everything is in balance. Everything will balance itself out. Earth has a, the earth has a way of rectifying itself. Life, you know, what does he say? It has a way, you know? And the earth will heal itself. Things will right itself. And it's just, got, it's just, you know, uh, the, a, a day in the earth as according to the earth, it's a little different than a day according to us. Our perception of time is related to our size, uh, you know, on this planet, you know, like a fly time goes much slower to a fly or an ant because they're so tiny. Um, but so their perception of time is different than our perception of time. So that being said, um, I don't really think that things are going to go in a time schedule that we like because it's, it's, that's just not how shit works. Um, but I believe for sure this coming year, 2024 is the year of truths coming out. And I think that it's going to be painful for a lot of people there. You got to realize there are still people out there who think that the vaccine prevents COVID. You know what I mean? Like they've, they've bought into it so hard. There are still people who wear masks. There are still people out there um, who are spreading racist rhetoric as if black people are superior to anyone, which is not true. We're all the same, dude. We're all the fucking same. And the more we continue to perpetuate this, like making it right shit. No, what we need to do is make it right for the poor people. That's what we need to do. We need to focus our collective energy on raising up the poor, not just the minorities, not just anyone, everyone. Everyone who is disadvantaged financially and in life needs to be assisted and raised up. Period. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter who you sleep with. It doesn't, it, those things should not take precedence. It should just be everyone, anyone who is not succeeding and needs a fucking leg up. Just my two cents. Hey, Moth. Yeah, so that's kind of another thing too, two parts happy is that um, I, I want to do something to essentially just tell God how grateful I am you know, with my physical actions. Um, that's all rituals really are is, uh, is getting, you know, it, it, it's, you know, but rituals mean more when there are more than one person doing it, you know, like I could do it by myself, but if wind can, can get here and we can get us and the kids together, That's good. Just put me up in the corner. Just don't put me in the tub because I'll slide right in there. If your phone, someone starts to call you and the, it starts to vibrate, it'll sloop right into the tub.
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, cool, uh, Rob C. Zombie. My friend Heather did this tattoo for me. Dude. Homemade non. New banking services platforming free speech organizations. I'm going to listen to this on two times this video. Um, so NPR speed. did a story about how there's kind of alternative payment systems developing. Now, let me, before I read this, let me give it this proviso. This is from NPR, and their framing is as you would expect. These crazy Christians and Nazis are making payment platforms, and it's a threat. And, you know, they don't say that, but they pretty much say that. Um, so you have to approach this article the way Noam Chomsky advises you approach the New York Times. There's a lot of information in it that you can tease out, but you have to understand there's a framing on it. Now, at the end of the article, I will knock down the framing with some facts of uh, who's getting debanked, and it certainly isn't only the right wing. Um, so how anti-vaccine activists in the far right are trying to build a parallel economy. Entrepreneurs and influencers from across a spectrum of conspiracist and religious communities gathered in Las Vegas in March to discuss building an uncancelable future together. But the conference almost didn't happen. A few weeks before the re-platform conference was scheduled to begin, the event organizers lost access to their money from ticket sales. Their payment processor, Stripe, had frozen their account. Stripe just said, well, we're going to hold 70%. And what they do is they say, we'll give it back to you after the show, Speaker Dan Eddy told the audience from the Vegas stage. Conveniently for everyone involved, Eddy is the chief operating officer of an alternative payment processor, Gab Pay. It's a third-party company that works with the social media platform, Gab. Quote, we'll process for you, no problems, no questions asked, we'll do it. Eddie described telling the event organizers, we don't care if you're a goddamn werewolf. You can sign right up. For people in the business of opposing vaccination or unwelcome election results, mistrust of big financial institutions and tech companies is common. Increasingly, they can find alternatives being built by a community with a head start in developing the tools of the so-called freedom economy, the far right. The way this article is written is almost the story. Uh, developing the tools of the so-called freedom economy, the far right. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so disdainful throughout. Um, at Replatform in Las Vegas, Gab Pay got to be the hero. But it's also possible that the company was part of why Stripe froze the conference's money in the first place. A few weeks earlier, a news story by Mother Jones, shocker, about the event highlighted a promotional appearance that Gab Pay's executives had made on far-right conspiracy theorist Stu Peter's streaming show. Okay, man, I practically just landed. I didn't okay, have time so to Okay, so you can't go on a show if you own a company? Has he been on a show? Has he been on a show? Stu Peter's oh, yeah, well, so far-right conspiracy theorist has charged them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's conservative, but yeah. I, I mean, look, as I read these things, I feel a need to say because you can pick up an article and Tucker Carlson is a uh, Russian plant, right? Like, if I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm very dubious that that description is accurate. Um, you know, this article is very much coming from the point of view that the very, that anyone who questions what we know is a very safe and effective vaccine is a conspiracy theorist. So what does that mean in an article with that tone? Uh, Gap Pay founder Lonnie Passoff's interview with Peters included an exchange where the two sarcastically dismissed the idea that anti-Semitic conspiracies are hate, uh, conspiracy theories are hate speech. Again, I'm very dubious without a quote. Like when you see that kind of a characterization without a quote, the kind, the kind of person who would write an article in this tone would love to give you the damning quote, but they don't. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I'm very skeptical that that's what. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, he's with dad. Um, yeah, thank you, Disciple Rolo. But like I've said to every other person who comes in here and tells me to find some relationship with God, I have a very close and personal relationship to God. Thanks. Oh, yeah. No, he's just at his dad's for the month. <clears throat> he We do 30 days on, 30 days off. And the day of the eclipse, I dropped Elliot off um, on the 4th, February 4th, to his dad's. So March 4th, or sorry, I dropped him off at March 4th. I'm picking him up on uh, April 8th or something if I can. Whenever I can get him now, between then and now, is really when I'm going to get him. But... Um, it, the fourth would be one month. His dad wanted to keep him for an extra week because I had him for five weeks, but, um, uh, the eclipse is happening and I want my baby with me. So yeah, he'll be here any day. I can go get him here in the next couple days. He'll be here. I just really, 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 really hope wind. I'm going to send Wynn this money, and then um, hopefully she can get her butt up here. 
I don't really have the money to, I can, maybe I should just send her enough money to, for gas money too. So then I don't, she doesn't have to wait. She can just get a move on. Get her tires fixed and get gas and get up here. Um, Andrew Tate is mostly a force for good, but he's really like, I mean, he's a man and he's an egotistical man, you know? So like, he's not someone I would ever want to be friends with, but he really is trying to wake people the fuck up. The shit that he says is true. Everything that he said, I've doubled, you know, I've, it's, it's either I've come to some conclusion and then I've seen him say something. So like, I mean... Yeah, he's 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 right on target, you know, which is why they are intentionally doing everything they can to take him the fuck out. It's the same reason that they take Alex Jones. It's the same reason that any of any of us are censored. It's because you're you're too close to the, you're too over the bullseye. Mm, I would say messy. I think that um, Ronaldo is a little bit too much of a douche lord. Uh, 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 Alex, you must have a little, little Chianti. Um, so, um, I'm not really a fan of religion that promotes, like, doom and gloom. So, I don't, per like, so when it comes to Christianity, I don't like Baptist Christianity, particularly. Because, and Protestants, uh, really, like, Christianity, um, because they tend to preach fire and brimstone. And I do not, for one second, believe that any god that created all the beautiful things on this fucking earth and the like the majestic sh experiences that we have with animals and just like just none of this was created by someone or anything that could or would do anything with the intent to do harm incidental things happen for survival reasons or you know like you know weather happens and bad things happen but that's not with the intent for your life to be negative it's just a part of life it's a it's a dog eat dog world in the sense that you know the cycle of life must go on but yeah i'm not really interested or i don't really like um any any religion that promotes you know hateful rhetoric of any kind My Starlink satellite looks like it's wobbling a little bit. I feel like I should maybe go and, like, use more of those plastic zip ties to hold it to the tree.
That's nice, Iron Giant. Um, yeah, but so that's not necessarily true. Um, hatred, fear, and punishment aren't a, just a part. That's a part of humanity, and that's because God gave us this, like, you know, we are we are of God, and we have the good, the capacity for good and evil in us. But, like, animals don't have the capacity for evil. That's just a very human thing. Um, like, even, even, like, monkeys don't, like, their, their evil deeds are mostly, like, survival-based. And so, like, you gotta realize that, like, even with humans, the evil things that we are capable of doing are all done mostly for the, I mean, obviously there's psycho, psychos that just do things for no reason. But again, that's a very human thing. But, like, for the most part, when people do bad things... It's because they are doing what they think they need to do, what is in their best interest at that moment, and they don't necessarily care about the, like, collateral damage, you know? Every one of us is ultimately seeking the same thing. Food, shelter, you know, water, warmth, and love, you know? That's ultimately what every human being is seeking. Now, through, through trauma those types of that like psychotic behavior can be developed but as we are just as humans born on this earth there's not anything evil about us and you know how you know because when there's someone who is severely um mentally delayed or maybe has had some kind of brain damage um some severe brain damage i'm sorry but those are the some of the happiest smiliest people that you will ever meet and that is because they aren't thinking about things and ruminating about things and being depressed and, and focusing on things that literally don't matter. They just sort of like, oh, I'm eating food. I'm really happy. Oh, I'm warm. I'm really happy. Oh, I have the love of my mom. I'm really happy. You know, like it's just very simple things, very simple things for simple people. Um, we are, you know, it's our complexity and intelligence that makes us more capable of, of depression. I don't think that animals are evil. I think that animals kill, but I don't think animals kill just for whatever. Like cats kill for like to, to play, but that's because when cats kill things just to like whatever, they're practicing for when they do have to hunt. You know what I mean? It's still, it's not the intent isn't like, hee hee, I'm just going to murder someone or hey, hey I'm just going to maul someone. It's never like that. When it, even like cats, when it comes to cats fighting each other, they will literally do everything they can with their body language to try to avoid actually fighting with one another because they could actually really hurt each other. They know, but there's no animals that are e evil like that. That's just not even the closest thing would be like monkeys. But again, they're like, you know, what we would consider to be evil is the fact, Oh, this monkey like tore up my camp, you know? And they were like ripping, they, they, they killed someone trying to like, you know, while tearing apart my camp. Well, the monkey didn't do that. It's that the, probably these people were feeding the monkeys. The monkeys went back and told their friends that there's food here. And so now they've come and done a monkey raid on all your food. It's part of like, it's just, that's, it's opportunistic behavior. But that's like a, a you know, that's a survival instinct. Yeah, I read books. So we got to figure out, y'all, we all got to go get this app, Gab Pay. How do we get this on our phones? Because I guarantee you that Apple has removed Gab from the... Yeah, you can't get it on Apple. You have to fucking jailbreak your device in order to, to be able to use what you want. Isn't that fun? I hope you've uh, gotten yourself right, Joseph and Matt, um, with uh, 
I hope you've gotten yourself right with those seven deadly sins right here before this eclipse, because after this eclipse, the time for Christ-like behavior is here. Be ready. But, but hope you're ready to put up or shut up. And if anybody comes back, it ain't Jesus. It's the Antichrist, because the Jews are right now actively trying to summon the Antichrist by s sacrificing the red heifer and rebuilding the Temple Mount. They're going to create some serious war with the Muslims because they're going to tear down the mosque, the gold-domed mosque. Yep, he's calling. Yes, it is surely. And that's why, so I recommend everybody go and s try and be out with nature because you realize that everything that has the, the it, that has life force energy is a part of God. And the closer you are, the closer, the closest you can be to God on this planet is out in nature where there are so many of God's creatures. There's all these bugs, all these plants, all these things in the earth, the mycelium, everything is there listening to you and wanting to touch base with you. So if you want to talk to God, you go out into the woods. You just got to go and just go and commune with nature and be as close to God as you can in that moment. And that's all you can do. And I would fast and meditate during the eclipse. And what you need to picture during this eclipse, like while the eclipse shit is going on through that 24 hour period, visualize the reality that you think would make this world the absolute best possible place that we could have. And if it doesn't matter if necessarily your particular vision comes through, but if all of us with our hearts put the intent in the world for this place to be the best place for all of us, for all of our best interests, it doesn't matter if all of our individual, you know, visualizations maybe manifest exactly, but as long as we're putting that out there, we're going to create a reality that is in all of our best interest. The best, so the thing is though, is you got to realize that this technology that we use like Wi-Fi and stuff, it actually creates a scenario where you aren't able to connect to God quite as well. That's why it's so in, that's so important to them to get this like 5G shit out there and get Wi-Fi everywhere and saturate the world with this kind of shit so that we are on, we lose, we sever that direct connection uh, uh, like as much, or we, we fuzzy it up as much as we can, or they want to fuzzy it up. So if you go to a place where there is no cell service, you're out in the middle of nowhere and you do not have Wi-Fi, you, you know, you, you disconnect your phone from service or turn it off, leave it in your car, whatever the case may be, and just be out in nature with, where there's no service and just be with God. Hey, Lucy. Lucy, actually, I'm wanting to talk to you. So like... Did you hear, like, you and Jade are close, right? Are you and Jade still close? Because, like, what happened, I guess, like, a couple of months ago now, I don't know, she just, like, disappeared on me. And so I was just wondering, like, and I mean, like, I'm not gonna, t you know, like, I'm, I'm just curious. I was just like, oh, shit, I didn't, I realize now that they were getting close and they were talking, like, all the time. So, like, I'm curious if, like, whatever happened with Jade, if maybe, one, Lucy has a little bit more insight into it, and two, if, uh, like, I want to just, like, you know, if Jade hates me or whatever, like, and is talking shit about me, I just want to make sure that I'm kind of, like, protecting myself, you know?
but like I just basically decided so she had messaged me and she said that the reddit trolls were like lying on her and not to believe like anything I saw or whatever and I was confused because I had no idea what was going on I don't go to the reddit ever and so I didn't know what was going on. So uh, then all of a sudden in the chat, like a bunch of people were like, Jade is an op, Jade is an op, Jade is, you know, like, blah, blah. and uh, I was like, wait, what's that mean? I don't know what's going on. And so then like I got sent some screenshots that were like from the Reddit. And it was like basically someone with a different name, like claiming like, oh, no, that's not me. You know, like, blah, blah, blah. it was like basically the way the conversation was going was like Jade had reached out to the redditors trying to i guess talk shit she was talking shit about me on the reddit and like joining in on it and then like after talking shit for a while she then reached out to one of the mods and was like hey i'm actually jade can you like remove my name from like certain posts or like can you help me like get you know like, and so instead of helping her they called her ass out and were like oh shit like you're heather's like head admin and you're over here like talking shit about her like we're fucking we're, we're outing you <laughs> like what do you think we are we're the shitty redditors duh <laughs> so um so they outed her and like i opted when i first like re like when it all first came out and stuff i decided that i was not going to just immediately believe it because i have been in that situation before right and so I was not going to just snap to believe it. But what I did do, like, basically to protect myself is I removed Jade as a moderator or as an admin. And I decided that if she's not lying, if, like, she didn't do this, she's going to continue to be in the chat. She's going to continue to, like, engage with me. She's going to continue to reach out through text messages. Like, she's going to just, like, we're, this is just, we're just going to move on from this. And then I'll eventually add her back as an admin. Because, like, you know, someone who didn't do something is, isn't, you know, whatever. So, um, I basically had decided that I would test the waters to see if I thought she did it. And essentially what happened was that message she sent me to tell me how she didn't do it, that was literally the last time she ever talked to me. So after that, like, I was just like, oh, okay, I, I guess that she was doing it. And so the shit that she was saying, basically, she was saying how she hated me and how she did not like me at all. And the only reason she was continuing to be in the chat at all was because she feared for Elliot's safety. And like, she was really worried about Elliot. She cared about him and that, you know, she just she she was like, basically, you know, just kind of like making sure everything was OK and like. I understand why she went about things the way she did, like, as far as, like, trying to get her name removed from, like, talking shit. Because, like, dude, you know, she's just, like, a 19-year-old, you know? She's young. And she really just, like, stepped in it. And so, um, I, I knew, that's why kind of I, like, I was kind of, like, I'm just gonna see if, if, like, if I remove her admin privileges... Um, but I'm not mean or I'm not going to like, call, I'm not going to like be rude to her in any way, but I'm just going to give her the opportunity to show me that it was, it wasn't true. You know what I mean? And then instead she basically confirmed like, you know, the things that I was worried about. And, um, I choose not to, I choose not to be like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like a little frustrated with, you know, the scenario, but she's so young and that's why, like, I, I just completely can put myself in her shoes. You know, she's, like, super young. She's just, like, watching someone's live stream. And now all of a sudden, because she happens to be a regular in the chat or whatever, even as an admin, it's not like she's paid. But, like, her whole fucking, they're, like, they're doxing her. You know what I mean? Like, my, my admins have all been doxed. So, like, I understand why, you know, I don't appreciate how... But I understand why it happened, you know. But yeah, I just wanted to talk to you and I just wanted to like kind of see where your head was at. And as far as like if you were like, because I just, you know, I want to protect myself. I don't want to like if, if you guys hate me, don't I don't I don't want you guys to, you know, I don't want you to have access to me for fuck's sake. And then at the same time, like, you know, I wanted to like. I don't know, I just want to be transparent about everything. I don't like. I don't like wondering. I want to like know. And so I just ask, you know, directly and try to like figure it out. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lucy, that's that's the hundred percent why it all happened. Is because they like she wanted her shit removed from the Reddit, but like the way she went about it was like, you know, she created a, a fake account and then was like joining in the shit talking so that they all like accepted her in the group. And then once she had like done that for a little while, I I guess that she reached out to them through private message and was like, hey, you know, like, um, I'm actually, you know, this person, can you please remove me? Like, see how, I, you know, she was basically like, see, see, I'm one of you. You can do this nice thing for me because I'm one of you. Like, even, I don't necessarily think she meant it, you know, like, I don't necessarily think she, like, meant that she hated me or that meant that she, like, you know, I don't, I, I, I kind of feel like, if it, like if she didn't like me after knowing like everything that was going on like well fuck her then you know yeah yeah lucy that's it 100% she 100% that's it i i really feel like that's what happened but um but ultimately you know going the way she went about it it was her youth you know she just genuinely was just like "Ooh, i got this great idea work you know it, these are things that we have to go through as people in order to like realize how we should not act and you know things that we should not do are you serious the fire went out like expecting it to warm any sec oh no it didn't yay but yeah, so like, I don't have any fucking animosity for her, you know, like, I don't hate her, and then like, whatever, I wouldn't let her be my admin again, because like, I'm not foolish, and I, I gotta like, especially when I'm like, what I was going through the last couple of months and stuff, like, you know, I was at my lowest, my most vulnerable. So the people who take advantage of me, when I'm in my most vulnerable state, like, I, I, I mentally note that, you know what I mean? And so, like, I would never trust her again to be my admin, but I literally would be more than willing to, like, just call her ass out face to face and have her just admit it. And then we just move on, you know, but because she is young, she, you know, and guilty, she took the kind of the, the easy way out. And I mean, I understand it. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. I've totally done it. I've been, I've been that person, you know, and, and I've, oh, what sign is Jade? Is Jade a Libra? I can't remember. I feel like she might be a Libra and like, that would just make so much sense, you know? No, she's a Virgo. Yeah. See, she's, she's trying. Yeah. See. She's just learning, learning the hard way. guys i want to get a laptop i need a laptop if anybody has a laptop please consider oh or you guys everybody should start tagging <laughs> start tagging like meta pc in all of my videos or start like like messaging them like crazy and asking them to sponsor me thank you i appreciate that I was trying to be really mature, you know, like I was trying, well, I mean, I was, you know, like I just, I choose to not like just be an asshole about stuff. Like anytime that I have been accused of something, it's not been true. And so it sucks to be accused of something that's not, your, that you have not done. And I wanted to make absolutely sure that that was the case before I like decided whether or not to like, you know, I, I didn't want to do the thing that I like get mad at Roxanne for doing to me. You know what I mean? I know Jax's mom, but I want to get one that's going to function. That's going to work for a long time. That's going to be really good. And that I can just like, like forget about for like a few years. And I'm pretty sure that like, if we can get this meta PC company to sponsor me, like they'll give me a laptop. And then all I have to do is like, you know, talk, I will literally talk about, I will fucking wear a, I'll have a sign behind my head that says meta PCs in all of my videos. You know what I mean? I fucking would be happy to do that. 
but I just need to like get their attention. So we'll see. Dude, I know the ghost within. So like I need I need my like my loyal followers to like reach out to them on Twitter or Instagram or whatever and be like, "Hey, you know that girl Subliminal Locks on YouTube? You should totally and then like put my link in there like youtube.com/subliminallocks or at subliminallocks cuz if they search for me, they might find all that fucking bullshit. So like if they just go like the link if they go straight to my page, I don't care if they see all the bullshit because it's mostly bullshit anyways. But you know, like um I want them to be bothered. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want to bother them. I wonder if I still have the guy from MetaPC's cell phone number. I can't remember how, but I had reached out to them in email and I was trying to work something out with them and we were supposed to talk on the phone. This was a while ago. We never ended up talking on the phone because I didn't end up buying, I was going to buy a laptop and I was looking for a discount. My, one of my clients was going to help me get a laptop so that I could start this TikTok shop business. But like she ended up not giving, like it just ended up not working out. Um, Jax's mom, it's called Meta PC. It is a computer company and they sell freaking the best computers. Like they're built by people who are awesome. It's veteran owned. They're not woke. They won't fucking, they don't play identity politics games. They don't do race baiting bullshit in their advertisements. They are just regular people who are just trying to just be good parents and great business owners and the reason why i want to buy their computer is the one that why i want to use their product specifically is and why i want to do sponsorship with them is because i genuinely respect them as business and i fucking want one of their devices because they i i want to like talk sh i want to talk them up i want to i want to use one of their awesome fucking machines because they're so freaking cool and they are made they're made well like you you guys know who lewis i think his name is uh lewis rasmussen hold on let me see if i can find him he's the guy that does the um repair right to repair lewis lewis rossman so Lewis Rossman, he, his channel, like he is a really good repair man. When you take your computer to him or your cell phone to him, like he will actually do it and like do it in a way that is going to save you money. And like, he's, he's good person. You know what I mean? Like a good business person. He knows that if he delivers a good, does a good job, he will get return clients. And that's the kind of small businesses that I want to support. And so this meta PC, that's the kind of place that they are. They make a really quality product because they want their quality product to speak for itself. I mean, a play mood, I don't really appreciate you talking about that and stuff, but I'm, and I'm not like for Palestine in any, I'm not, I'm, I'm an American. I'm just a regular like woman in rural ass woods america so it's really not my say what goes on in palestine as far as they're concerned but i can't stand israel and what they're doing just to everyone in the world especially what's going on in palestine right now at this moment but like just everything they're doing right now the fucking sacrificial cow thing trying to build this fucking mount or this temple so that they can bring on the messiah it's just a fucking it's wild
It's Meta, M-E-T-A. M-E-T-A P-C. Meta P-C. Diddy's former bodyguard has released audio of Diddy destroying Meek Mill in the bedroom after Meek's drink was spiked by Diddy. All this is according to Diddy's former bodyguard who recorded the audio. I want carrot. I want to do the green juice. I told you I love the taste of green. I'm Hannah. I was first. I'm Catherine. I was second. And I'm Nadia. I came out there. They saved the best for last. And, and we're, we're the, the Capasso triplets. triplets. We've lived together since the womb. It just works best for us. I can't imagine just ever separating. There's just no need anyway. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do green juice with us? I want carrot. That's okay, because I actually want some of that, too. Mm -hmm. We do everything together, from sleeping, to mm -hmm. getting ready, to working, to Your boobs learning, are all different sizes, gaming, and your lips are all different cooking. sizes. Is there anything you guys don't do together? We wake up together, we go, we check our news feeds together, and then once we make it out of bed, then that's when we start to taking our vitamins and... Hmm. If you're schizophrenic, I uh, implore you to do some research on how they've been doing they've discovered that people with um with uh with any of the what is it called i can't remember the the phraseology but it's just it's schizophrenic and it's paranoid schizophrenic and there's a bunch of different it's like a whole class of like whatever but anyways they have discovered that people who suffer from this mental disorder have like 800 times the amount of DMT in their bodies than like the average person. The average person only produces DMT like that when you're dying or when you use the drug. Um, but people with schizophrenic, uh, I can't remember the word, but it's like schizo adjacent. What is the word? I mean, why would you not be schizo anymore? That's not what I'm saying at all. So anyway, as I was saying, I implore you to do some research on how people that are schizophrenic have 800 times the amount of DMT in their urine than a regular person. So the visions that people have, the hallucinations that people are experiencing with schizophrenic uh, disorders, they are actually, you're basically speaking to interdimensional beings and only the United States of America has their human, has the people with schizophrenia in the United States have a negative relation to their disorder. It's called a disorder. But in other countries, their visions and their hallucinations aren't negative. They're actually positive, and these people are celebrated by by their people and actually like they 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 are like give valuable information. But what you should do is document your hallucinations and then see go through them later and and try to see if you can suss out what your visions necessarily were trying to tell you that can help you to better society in some way or maybe even draw the things that you're seeing and maybe it can help to help you help other people to um look into what they've got going on too
but anyway, it's so like your hallucinations on and your your audible and visual hallucinations, they are actually like you're really fucking seeing something. It's not just that you're you're just making a bunch of shit up in your mind. You're literally high on DMT, brah. That's the god molecule. That's the drug that the drug that people take in order when they do ayahuasca. That's what they're seeking is what you get to do like every day. It's mind blowing. And you know, like it's kind of been a, like, and I've been saying this since I was, I'm not even kidding, probably 11 years old, kind of like a smart, I'm probably heard my mom say it or something, you know? And so I was just parroting what I heard, but I've always said like, watch, you know, like it could be a scenario where like Jesus literally returns and someone is going to see, oh, like, oh, that you're Jesus, huh? Okay, buddy, let's go to the funny farm. Like, if literally, actually Jesus came and started saying the things that Jesus would say and, and he, like, people would think he was a lunatic. You know what I mean? So how are we going to sit here and say that people with schizophrenia don't see things? How do we know? Like, how, do, how are we going to sit there and say that people like that are only experiencing something negative? Why can't it be that we are, we, we look to them more like oracles and allow them to lean into their their difference because it's not a disorder it's a difference why can't we allow these people to lean into their difference and 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 not make them pariahs when you hear someone is schizo immediately you're like oh my god are you gonna like hurt somebody and that's not fair because 99.99999% of the people with schizophrenic disorders do not do things to harm other people <coughs> It's very, very frustrating. And like I said, only in the United States are people with this, with like the United States in the Western world, I guess, not, not so just the United States because it's the Western, Western medicinal world where they do mental health the way that we do it here. They, that's where people who have schizophrenic disorders tend to experience negative hallucinations and negative audible, like laughing or people talking, like whispering and making them paranoid. Okay. And that only really happens here because we, as soon as someone is diagnosed with hearing things that are immediately told something is wrong with them, they're put on these medications, they're going to all these therapies, they're ushered around. And for as a child or an adult, like going into that situation, it can be very traumatizing. And then especially when you're raised, like if you are a, uh, diagnosed as an adult or, an, or, or older and you're, you know, like you've already gone through the social uh propagandizement of like oh people like that are bad people like that see scary things and that embeds itself in your subconscious mind and it manifests itself it's just messed up oh thanks blitz i mean we got to think of things differently we got to like realize that that the world is a lot more magical and there's so much more to like quantum entanglement and like the more that we look we learn about science the more we learn about magic i mean our fucking pineal gland is like crystal for fuck's sake you know like we are divine beings with the god of uh, the fucking the the life force of god like it, electricity is essentially life force if you think about it everything that is alive has an electrical signal electrical signals indicate life right so like we are all everything that has an electrical signal is a is a part of god and why in the world can't we just re understand that we are unique our, we all have a fucking purpose on this planet, even like children that end up being killed and things like that. Like, unfortunately, there's it's it's a neutral it's a neutral it's neutral. God is neutral to everything. But all it just every experience has to be experienced. We have to go through all these things to learn what not to do, how not to behave, what to do. Like God is evolving as we evolve. And I really, really think that we need to remember that we need to remember who we are. And it's not the sense of like, remember your past lives or like, remember like where you came from. No, it's literally remember that we are all of God. 
we are all at one like we're it, it, the differences between us as human beings is like the difference between my skin cell and my heart cell or my eyelash or like like my hair cells or my freaking uh tooth cells you know what i mean like just the differences it, we're all of the same body. It's still all my body. If you check the DNA, it'll all check back to me. It's all a part of me. But they're two completely different looking and functioning body parts, right? That's how humans are and, and animals and plants are on this planet. We are all of the same body. We're from the same. If we all, you genetically test us, we'll all align somewhere along there. But we're just different because we all have different functioning purposes on this planet. And that's just the way it is. We need to remember that. We need to remember that we're all of God. We need to remember that what happens to, to you happens to me. What's good for you is good for me. What's bad for you is bad for me. And that is just the way of it. And so we need to be more focused on being a kind of pay it forward people in the sense that you don't have to be so self-centered and worry about yourself all the time if every one of us worries about the person directly to our right. You know what I mean? So if we all folk, like worry about and care about other people as much as we care about ourselves, we can count on the fact that people will care about us and we'll be cared for as much as we care, you know? People need to be given a lot of grace and we need to just like chill the fuck out Stop all this like race baiting bullshit and stop the fighting with one another. We need to start looking at who is actually suffering in society right now. And we need to focus on, um, on, a, on not so much on what the color of their skin is or who they sleep with or what religion they are. We just need to find the disadvantaged people in society and we need to, as a community, raise them up. What's good, like we, you know, it's like the, uh, the fucking uh, herd of animals. What happens when the predators try to strike at the weak or the young? The fucking herd rallies around them and protects them. Like, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to rally around each other. And the fact that we've allowed ourselves to become so, like, it's like how, I've said this before. It's like how the, when you get into a new car and you shut the door, it's like... You're like hermetically sealed inside this bubble and you can't hear out. You can't hear anything in like, you know, you're, you're completely, I know, like a separate pod from the entire rest of the world. That's why people speed and drive like idiots because they're, they're completely disconnected from the world around them, you know, and we need to, we need to, we need to, to shirk that. We need to look to. Uh, what the elites are doing and focus our like realize that they've got us fighting with each other based on what we look like what we're wearing who we're fucking and they're laughing at us because we're busy picking and fighting with each other all goddamn day instead of going like you know what guys can we just like put this on hold for a little while if this is really important we'll get back to this but let's go ahead and just like look to where we really need to be looking and and that's like up and at these guys like they're more afraid of the poor people rallying and the the rest of the community rallying around the poor than they are of anything else like martin luther king got killed right right after what the poor people's march because martin luther king wasn't just a threat for a race crap bringing people together as far as they were concerned he was now becoming a problem because he was uniting all the people around the herd to rally around the weak and the sick and the young. It's just like, you know, JFK started to be a threat. Gotta go. Love Bunny. As of the eclipse, can we, like... We're making a conscientious decision now to no longer support content creators, Hollywood types, musicians, politicians, etc., at sports people. If they don't show you that they are truly who they say they are, we need transparent, authentic, good people in this world. 
being an example for our youth and being an example for, uh, for us all to like be inspired by. Um, Elena, I'm going to block you if you don't stop. That's baiting. Lulu, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late at all. Here's the thing. They are getting really sloppy because time is running out. Israel is literally genetically modifying cows so that they can try to create this fucking once in a lifetime, like this, this once in a, you know, special heifer so that they can sacrifice it and try to bring on the Messiah. Okay. But see, here's the thing. It's not going to work because they've genetically altered these cows. They bought five of them and now they found one is blemished so they can't use it. So maybe they get one out of it. That's all they need is one. They can sacrifice this perfectly unblemished cow. But it's all, they're, they bought, they bought, this isn't like some miracle where some random red cow was just born and that signals, that heralds the, on the coming of the Messiah, okay? It's a whole other thing if this cow is just born in Jerusalem, heralding the time to do the sacrifice, to do the building of the temple. But they're manufacturing it. They've genetically they purchased five perfect red heifers from a fucking uh, cloning company in Texas. And they're, they've shipped them over there so that they can sacrifice them on Passover. It's like April 28th or 20 something. So we're going to let this all like, we're just going to let all these people continue to be like popular in the, like the mainstream people that are like all for this kind of crap. Like, this is the absolutely most baffling thing is like, we actually, we are the people and we have the power. You guys realize that, right? We're the ones who, who keep the economy going. It's our dollars that we spend. It's our grocery money. The reason that they don't, that, that homesteaders and like, and, and fucking off-grid people are a threat is because we teach you guys how to fucking garden and we teach you guys how to fucking not rely on them and their grid and their services that they've made it up made you dependent on and the thing is is that a lot of people don't a lot of the people that are stuck in society and whatever they're slaves to comfort oh i could never do that what you do heather i could never do that yes the fuck you could you just don't want to because you want to be a slave to your comfort but being a, stepping outside of your comfort zone is where all of the lessons of life are learned. And like, I was a priss, a total priss, scared of bugs, couldn't do a hair clipping phobia, glitter phobia, didn't like anything, eh, ickiness, didn't like being outside. I literally forced myself into this situation so that I would get over all that. My motto, I literally have a t-shirt. I'll uh, put it on the thing real quick here. Hold on. Um... I, I made merch because, uh, I mean this so much, but lean into the cringe, y'all. Literally lean into the cringe. When something makes you fucking, like, when something makes you go like, oh, no, I could never, da, da, da. That means right there, that's the one, that, that's the thing that you need to go, <sighs> okay, well, it looks like I'm leaning into this now. I'm gonna go find out why I'm so cringed about this. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work again? I pinned it. And they're not there. Whatever. Anyway, I just put the merch up. So you can see it. No, two parts happy. I actually want to be um, on the road myself. But either way, you know... It doesn't matter if you're on the road. It doesn't matter if you're you're growing food on a homestead. What matters is that you are self-sufficient and you do not need to rely on society or the government for anything. It's a luxury being able to use the store, being able to go to the store. Like these things are, you know, these are actual luxuries. These things that we don't, we take for granted as like just everyday things. These are actually luxuries and we take them for, we, you know, we're entitled as Americans and we take it for granted. 
Um, but we need to become more self-sufficient. We need to, you know, we need to be able to set ourselves up in situations where we're at the very least um, able to to feed ourselves and, you know, clothe ourselves. It's important to learn how to hunt, and it's important to learn how to 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 make hides, and it's important to learn how to fetch water, where to get water, how to dispose of your pee and poop. No, I don't mean travel the world. I mean just, like, be mobile, like what I want to do, which is I just want to be in a house with wheels and I want to go to the grocery store and I want to like go and put my groceries right immediately in my house and then make lunch and then maybe drive somewhere else like that's what I want to do I want to like go back into society for a little while and have some luxury and convenience because I've been living rough for the last like three years and I'm ready for I'm ready for like, my kind of luxury is like running water. My kind of luxury is like a, a kitchen where I can like bake and make pasta. That's my kind of luxury. And that's all I want. I just want a kitchen and I want a, and I want a uh, sink to wash my dishes in. According to the Auschwitz Museum, this is the airtight door that was used to hold 1.5 million people who were killed in the gas chambers. Airtight door. Pretty interesting. It's almost like not an airtight door. You would expect on a gas chamber that the door would be like airlocked with like a <laughs> so that doesn't make any sense how is this an airlock door this is not an airlock door an airlock door would be metal it would be like the doors that they have in a submarine that's an airlock door a submarine but that's what I'm trying to say is so there's stuff about the Holocaust that we've been told that is not accurate and that we need to actually go and look. Yeah, no, this is from the museum of this is the Auschwitz Museum. Uh, on the occasion of this year's anniversary of the da -da -da, unique relic was presented. The only surviving gas chamber door from the crematorium number V, which was blown up by the SS during the final evacuation of the camp. So this is from the Auschwitz Museum's Instagram page. Um, so. But like my point, the point is, is that there is a lot of proof that's coming out that they actually did not gas anybody. The reason that they gassed people, <laughs> that they used any gas on people was to de-louse them. The camps, the, the the information that's coming out is that what was actually done in those places is they were work camps. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of, I'm not, I'm not as versed on it and I'm on YouTube right now. So I want to be mindful about not like trying to like uh, say stuff that's too wildly inaccurate and not like that I don't have like fresh in my mind because I haven't done a lot of looking into this freshly uh, except for this right here. But yeah. Um, Before, um, before Hitler, um, the, there was this huge thing in Russia. It's this, the, the conflict with the Bolsheviks. You guys should look into that and look at what happened, um, there and who actually killed whom. And if you go and look at old newspapers from like around that time, even before Hitler, they were saying six million Jews had been killed and six million Jews were like homeless and looking for like, or six, there was a number six million that had been thrown around 
before Hitler even came into power. And then when Hitler came into power, they started using that, num that same number, six million again. But it's just very, very, very interesting how the more you notice things, the more you notice things. Things make less sense and it makes you even more curious. Um, I've said this a lot here recently, but I implore you guys to just go and read why did Hitler do what he did to begin with? Why? Why? And what I have found out was the reason that Hitler did what he did, it was not, he was not trying to create an Aryan race, that he never said that not one single solitary time. Uh, actually, what he was doing was he was trying to, he, it, it started with him getting the Rothschilds, who we know is one of the 13 families in the elite power, like everybody knows that now, that's mainstream, right? Everybody knows that the Rothschilds are part of the problem, right? It's like Vanguard and BlackRock, everybody knows. So he was getting, he kicked the Rothschilds out of Germany because they were taking over the banking industry. And he was a patriot and was like, absolutely not. You're not going to come to Germany and then turn it into another place. You're not going to immigrate here and then turn Germany into where you want it to be. This is Germany. This is what we're, we, we want our, to sustain our way of life. And so the Rothschilds were giving him a lot of heart. So he kicked them out. And then the Rothschilds went to the United States demanding a, mil a billion dollars. So the United States gave the Rothschilds a billion dollars and they then created Israel. And that's how Israel came to be. Was uh, the Rothschilds who were kicked out of Germany came to the United States, billion dollars was involved, and, and then Israel was created. It's really, really, really curious. Um, I'm going to actually get Hitler's book. I want to read it. I want to see just, I want to see what the man said for himself. Like, I don't trust anything the government has told me at all now. And I just want to see for my own two eyes what was said so that I know. It's not going to kill me to do it. I'm not going to suddenly, like, be a, become a murderous heathen if I read this book all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like, I've, it's just a book. So they've got us so trained to, to, to be like against this man. And it's like, why, why do I hate this person? I've never met. Why do I not like someone that I've never even heard their own words before? I am allowing my whole judgment on a man who supposedly did these terrible things. I want to know, like, with the Chinese government and the things that they did, the atrocities they did, we're allowed to talk about that openly and, and discuss these things. With the atrocities that other people, and we are allowed to figure out for ourselves that, yes, they really did these fucked up things. Like what fucking, um, what's his name, golly? Guy from Russia that was the communist guy in Italy, Mussolini. You know, like all these people that did terrible things, these communist dictators in their countries, like what they did, like it's, it were. I've been able to do the research, hear their words and be like, wow, that's fucked up. Those guys were mean and nasty, you know, fucked up people. So like, why is it that I'm not allowed to do that with Hitler? Why is there some kind of like blanket, like, oh, no, 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 you just need to trust us. You shouldn't read that. Like, what? I get my information from all different types of linen. Thank you. Yes, linen. Thank you, delightful. Um, I get my information from all different sources. I am my own source. When I get information from something that either doesn't make sense to me or it makes me curious, I then take that information and I go and I look in many different sources to, and resources to see what I can find. I go on Twitter and I put the information in the Twitter search bar and then I just scour Twitter and see what, what like the most, you know, the most, like what I can find on Twitter. Then Usually I can, through the, a couple of posts, I can find other things that will network in. Sometimes I'll have to go outside of Twitter and like go to like other platforms, social media platforms like Rumble to look up certain videos. Um, but uh, I just go and I start breaking down the information, you know, I just want to know. And I want to hear... So I am the kind of person that when I have conflict with someone, I would prefer to have the communication directly with that person 
you know, as long as I understand that they are just, you know, they're not going to, like, I, you can't have a conversation with Roxanne. She gets physical, you know? Like, I'm not going to get in a fisticuffs with someone over anything. But, like, um, you know, I the goal is ideally to end conflict, right? So if we can both enter into the conversation with conflict resolution in mind, like, that would end it. That's ultimately the goal is to confront every situation head on and not have secrets and, and sneakiness. So... So, um, you know, like, why wouldn't I listen to the words the man actually said for himself? What was he telling his people that made them in so such agreement with him? You know, how was he able to, to captivate so many people? And what actually was he saying? And what was he doing? What was his actual moves? You know, what were his thoughts? And so the more that I learn about the man... The more I hear the words he said, the more I read the words he said, the more I'm like, Jesus Christ, he had a fucking point. And it scares the shit out of me. And I don't, and I'm, and the whole thing of like him having a point directly relates with the fact that I'm starting to not believe that people were killed. Like, I mean, it's war. People were killed. It was war. But I'm starting to believe less in the fact that he was committing genocide like that. I think that, I, I, I just don't think that. I'm starting to not think that. But I'm gonna do more research on it and I'm and my mind could be, I'm in a place right now where I'm just, I'm, I want to take in information so that I can decide what I think. But at this point, I just don't believe anything the government has told me anymore. You know? I, I just don't believe it anymore. I've caught them in too many lies. Every single day, they're lying. Like, they, they twist things and they, on purpose, try to smear people. And they don't even just, like, take fact and twist it to make people look bad. They do that. But they just outright lie. They will say whatever they can. And whatever they want. And the thing is. is like Sometime during Obama's administration. There was something that was done. Something he, he did. Where he removed the restriction on the media. Where they can't lie to you. There was something that happened. In Obama's te uh, term. One of his terms. Where it. I think it was like in 2013. No, but that name is familiar to me. Thank you for giving me something to Whoops. Thank you for giving me something to look up. It, that name is familiar to me. Hold on. Yes, I do know who she is. Yes, I do. Um, so I think... So I'm not sure what I think about her. I, um, I feel like the last thing I saw about her made me think she was a fake. But... Um, there was someone who I believe is real, and she's, um, she's British, though. I can't remember her name, but she was a real witch, like, doing freaky weird shit. Michelle. No, we haven't heard from Michelle. I'll text her right now again. Thank you for reminding me. He's with his dad. He'll be back in the next couple of weeks. Or next couple of days.
Oh my god, the stove is finally starting to warm up. I just heard the metal tink. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased here to be joined with Lorraine Ray, environmental scientist. We're going to have a far-reaching conversation on a wide variety of mind-blowing topics. I'm Daryl Hamamoto, professor at UC Davis, Department of Asian American Studies. Lorraine, it's really great to be with you here today. Thank you very much, Daryl. Why don't you lead in on some of the fascinating research that you've been doing? Well, uh, I'm a UC Davis grad. Because people are women. I um, graduated in 1968, one of the first women in the geology department. And I came back in the 90s to do my PhD in the ancient history of the Earth's magnetic field, going back 25 million years. And... Um, then I met a very interesting man in Livermore when I was living there. Uh, I became a Livermore lab uh, whistleblower, nuclear weapons lab, and uh, his name was Marion Falk, and he started teaching me about radiation. And so I became an international specialist on radiation, and finally, one day, Daryl, I said, this global pollution with radiation that's killing the whole biosphere is omnicide. It's suicide, uh, homicide, uh, e epicide is every kind of death, but basically it's a death across the whole earth of all living things. And finally, I said, this just cannot be an accident. And I sat down at my computer in about the year, in about, about six years ago, and I Googled University of California plus weapons of mass destruction. So we're talking about 2010. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It was University of California plus Skull and Bones. Plus Skull and Bones. Oh, yes. Yes. The Russell Trust. Yes. And that took me down a rabbit hole. I'm still going down because now I'm investigating who's at the very top, who really rules the world. And I discovered it's a, um, a very, very interesting history of ancient Iranian tribes, the original Zoroastrians and the first world Persian empire that uh, has controlled the world for the last 5,000 years. And so that brings us to UC Davis and what is occurring now with what was a covert presence of the Jesuits who, and Monsanto, because it's an agricultural college, um, and Monsanto was started by the Jesuits. And, um, um, and this, this, uh, this global transition, 1,000 year, a millennium transition from the decline of the original Silk Road that created tremendous wealth for 5,000 years and the collapse now, 1,000 years later, of the Western economy and the rebirth of the Silk Road, uh, which has been engineered by China. And now China and uh, Russia are partners and Iran now has joined them. Now, the reason why I'm this is seven this years ago. Audience you know, members know that well, it's May 7th, 2016, and uh, many of the people who are watching this uh, presentation are aware that the current Chancellor of UC Davis, Linda P.B. Katehi, was recently put on administrative leave by President mm -hmm. of the University of California System, Janet Napolitano. Right. And Ms. Moray here today is going to be bringing together this incredible research she's done in the area of ancient history in reference to the ancient Iranian bloodlines and connected to what's going on right here and now. This is at a the two hour. Davis. And this uh, shows you the importance of this deep lecture. humanities civilizational study that's purpose purposely been excluded from the curriculum so that we have generations of, of supposedly educated people who are unable to, to do any type of analysis that's purpose. Hey, this. And this Hold up. Did you just hear that? Let's put this on regular speed for a second. Shows you the importance of this deep Listen. humanities civilizational study that's purpose purposely been excluded from the curriculum so that we have generations of of supposedly educated people who are unable to to do any type of analytical work that's going to ins help ensure our survival, our planet survival, land, sea, and air, and the animal species, including ourselves. That's just so we're gonna correct. We're gonna drill down in that area, mm -hmm. please. And um, I really want to thank you for. Um, the support that you've given me and encouragement and the recognition that uh, this is an important part of research, uh, the ancient history that, that practically no one knows about. And uh, I used to read a lot, read books and read history and, and believe all of that, but I just got more and more confused. And finally, around that time that um, I was going down the rabbit hole, I said, wait a minute, Confucius said, signs and symbols rule the world, not words and laws. And when I let go of that and I began trusting signs myself and, and my symbols intuition and rule my the world, and my not insights, laws. Um, it changed everything. And I began looking at signs and symbols and that's what opened all the doors. It's all right in front of us. It's, it's there for everyone to see, but they don't know how to integrate, to relate, to put together the information to tell the real story. Mm. I can guarantee you that this... Um the synthesis, this grand synthesis that you've managed to pull together, it's not being taught in the contemporary university. No. This, what we are about to present to you, ladies and gentlemen, is a paradigm buster. And the academic establishment are going to have to come in this direction <laughs> and acknowledge the incredible contribution that Lorraine Ray has made. Now, she's done it with a lot of open source material, a lot of published books. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that she tells you is, is thoroughly documented. This is some of it's uh, been hypothetical, but it's thoroughly documented. It's all part of the discussion. And I hope to contribute chime in uh, periodically as you're laying it out for us. <laughs> you're the one who got me here. <laughs> <laughs> you're giving us credit, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay, do you want me to blame you? <laughs> yeah, you can blame me. I think we're, we're all. <laughs> well, um, I, appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate blaming you. So, um, in the 60s, when I was here at, at, at Davis, um, there were 7,500 students. It was primarily an agricultural school uh, for ag economics and, and pomology, uh, uh, viticulture. Um, it was uh, uh, how to grow fruits and, and, and vegetables, and they had animal science, and it was over half foreign students. 
And um, I was in absolute heaven. <laughs> I loved it. It was a safe place to be. The classes were great. Um, it was uh, just, Davis has always been a very, very nice campus. And uh, today, uh, from spending time in the pig barn, I mean, the real pig barn on the campus and the dairy and um, just going out in the vineyards. And it was just so wonderful. And um, I have come back now in the year 1916. We've driven around the campus today and looked at buildings and names on buildings. 2016. I mean, 2016, okay. yeah. We're doing some time slipping here. Right. Okay. And, um, well, it's because I'm so astounded. It was like being in 1916. It is, it is a new, brave new world, absolutely. I'm, I'm here, and, oh, and you're yeah. telling me, you're giving me this uh, paradisical image of what UC Davis used to be like. It's yeah. completely different. It's completely okay. different. It's completely international. It's a uh, very new world order. It's uh, part of the transhumanism uh, movement. It's um, the ancient bloodlines are here, too, these ancient Iranian bloodlines. Oh, uh, yeah, under the carpet. But I was able to lift the carpet and... Um, it is Linda P.B. Katehi, who, uh, when I started investigating her names and her origin mm -hmm. and her associations and, and just her whole history, I went, oh, my Deshaun, God. Deshaun, right? Okay. Now I understand what's happening. And just for your information, ladies and gentlemen, Linda P.B. Katehi was just put on administrative leave, and the uh, I think the pretext for removing her was the fact that she had spent $170,000 of university money in order to uh, scrub her image on social media. And then there was some issue, for those of you who don't know, there was some issue about her being serving on boards mm -hmm. uh, and receiving uh, cash payment for that. But Lorraine is going to be drilling much deeper than that. This is, this is the official reason why she's temporarily being put out of the picture, but it goes much deeper than that. So I thought I would mm -hmm. provide a little bit of context there. Please. Thank you. So um, Linda Katehi was hired from the University of Illinois in 2009 as chancellor of UC Davis, the sixth chancellor of UC Davis. And um, I was here when Merak Hall was built. Um, it was the end of my undergraduate years here. And um, I knew Chancellor Emil Merak very, very well. And in fact, I was Arbor Day chairman for several years, and I planted the Merak Grove around Merak Hall in his honor, named the grove for him. And um, he was really a lovely man. I believe he was born in Vienna, Austria. And um, he was a wonderful chancellor. Uh, students always had priority over uh, other adults in his office. He would walk out of meetings with uh, Congress members, with faculty members, whatever, uh, to talk to a student. Um, and that was the students were the priority. That's changed now. Um, she uh, was actually came from Greece, and uh, she came through Chicago, which means you're a very, very special person. Many people, like John Kerry's parents, came from Czechoslovakia through Chicago. Chicago is Rockefeller headquarters, and that's why they, they come specially. They're picked in other countries. They're selected and funded and, uh, and brought here, and they immediately have good jobs and positions and um, usually part of the intelligence uh, operation of the United States. So um, she came with her husband uh, to, from the University of Illinois, and the University of Illinois is very interesting. She's an electrical engineer, a specialist in, in antennas. And her husband, um, uh, Spiros, uh, let's see, it's Sarah Gunas, Sarah Gunas, mm -hmm. um, is a uh, chemical engineer in uh, the uh, engineering department on the campus. And it's interesting that they're both involved in very, very new world order technologies. And she's involved in the antennas. Um, she has 19 antenna patents before she came to UC Davis. And they are all involved with the cell phones, the switching, with integrating with smart meters and other uh, technologies technologies, and um, and her husband's involved in coatings and protective coatings on metals and materials. It's sort of material science. And this is extremely important now because the huge amounts of nuclear pollution created by Chernobyl, by nuclear power plants, by our nuclear wars with depleted uranium and, and um, battlefield nukes and Fukushima. And um, uh, the neutron bombs that they're using on the battlefield now, um, and then Fukushima on top of all of that. And there have also been several Chernobyl-level events in the Ukraine with nuclear power plants and MOX fuel, which is what caused the Fukushima disaster. And those have all been in the last year, and no one even knows about it. <laughs> so what that's done is the Wigner effect. The radiation attacks the surface of metals and materials, and it disintegrates uh, those materials. It steals electrons, and, and I don't know if you've ever, ever seen, uh, if you put um, iron filings on a magnet and they start growing up, well, that's what all this radiation is doing to the surface of airplanes, to uh, thin metal, like the, um, the bands that go around and hold hoses on metal nipples, for instance, in hydraulic systems on planes. And we are having a complete breakdown of the entire airline industry from entropy. The, um, the Wigner effect is basically the, the crumbling or the decay of materials. And um, uh, we're having uh, airplane crashes, we're having emergency landings all over the United States, and as the radiation increases and the exposure increases... This is seven years ago. So here is uh, Chancellor Katehi's husband working in a very, very critical area of research on how to coat materials and protect them from this breakdown by radiation, by nuclear pollution, and it's, it's contaminated the entire air column. So who's behind that? Who's doing this insane poisoning of the entire planet? Well, it's the Jesuits. And the Jesuits, they're very, very prominent within the University of California because they came with the Spanish. Okay, at this juncture, let me uh, pose a question yes. for the uh, for the skeptics because it's very uh, common in, in this type of discussion here to single out Group A, B, or C uh, as being the source of all the world's ills. Mm -hmm. And there are books on it, one, uh, Vatican Assassins. So one question that comes immediately to mind is, is that um, are we talking about one singular group? Are we talking about one group in many different guises, different manifestations? Or are we talking about competing groups, Jesuits being one of many? Could you please explain that before we well, move forward? Uh, basically, when you look into literature, for instance, in the 1600s in uh, Czechoslovakia, there was a, um, I believe he was a priest. No. Venus, and he wrote a, a book My moon um, is in about, it was sort of um, an epic tale, I guess. And um, he described in that people sitting around together trying to come up with a global poison 
that would kill many, many people close by and far away. And they were talking about genocide. And if you go back some more into um, the Bible, the uh, you will also find mention of a global genocide. And you will also um, be um, So many people are going to be dying this next year to, uh, and the next two uh, years, three years to go, from that to, to go into regions and to kill all of the people and to burn all of their buildings and salt the earth, and, salt the earth mm -hmm. and destroy all their, their, destroy the firstborn sons. All their idols, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is basically um, the Jesuit embrace enfold extinguish it's the secret history of the jesuits mm -hmm. and the interest behind the jesuits the entities that created the jesuits during the um renaissance in italy uh it was none other than alessandro farnese a persian from ancient persia his family came through cappadocia in eastern turkey eventually to italy and they founded the first 10 etruscan cities in italy and when those were razed, they destroyed them, and they created the Roman Empire. The Romans, the Etruscans, the Holy Roman, Roman Empire, they're all Iranians. They're all Persians. It's all Persian blood. Italians are Iranians. Their practices, their beliefs, their uh, their uh, food, uh, their clothing attire. The Pope, for instance, wears a uh, papal tiara dome, uh, the, the papal dome, which is uh, uh, called the papal tiara. Well, that's what uh, men in charge of tribes in Central Asia wear. They wear those very large domed hats. And... Um, uh, some of the women do also if they're a, a leader of the, of the community. And then the red slippers that the Pope wears, those are, those are Central Asian slippers. You see them in India a lot and in, in Asia. Um, so there are many, many uh, cultural ties um, and um, uh, legends and, and uh, religious practices that indicate over and over and over again that the Italians are really Iranians. Mm -hmm. And uh, Romania was named for the Roman soldiers, the Iranian uh, equestrian nomadic uh, uh, fighters, warriors, were brought to Romania, to Eastern Europe, and they were the soldiers, the Roman soldiers of the Roman Empire. So you see... Uh, you see this fingerprint of Iranian DNA everywhere. And 14,000 years ago, um, DNA studies of a particular Iranian tribe indicate there was a mutation in the DNA, and it caused uh, uh, different extremes of albinoism. So the most extreme expression is red hair and blue eyes, light blue eyes. And then uh, more uh, moderate expressions are blonde hair, green eyes, hazel eyes, gray eyes. You see a lot, a lot of Afghanis with gray eyes. And so now you can walk around the Davis campus or get on a train or uh, walk by some friends sitting on, a, on a, <laughs> the steps of a, a building, and you can start talking to them, and you can tell they have Iranian blood. But it has to be from uh, both parents. It's a recessive gene. So that really got me started. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, now it's my understanding that, that uh, Aryan came from Iranian. That's, that's right. Synonym. So that's right. it has migrated down into our most recent history, the history of World War II, yes. global depression. Yes. So what I'm hearing from you is that this extensive history that goes back uh, millennia, right? Yeah, thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yes. We're witnessing the, I don't know if it's the end game or not, but we're, we're witnessing the contemporary expression of this bloodline in 2016. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't know where you're going with this, but perhaps Linda Pitay, what does someone like her fit into this brand scheme? Well, I had to, I had to understand why she was brought to UC Davis. Why right. was she hired? We know about the antennas. Yes. And, um, and then I discovered she and her husband were both working in, in technologies that were very relevant to New World Order, the New World Order agenda. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Then I um, started looking at her name and the origin of the name. So her name is Linda, which is probably um, an American name that she took on when she came here. P. B. Katehi. And uh, P. D is what the P stands for. Her first name is Pisti, her real name. And that's a Hungarian name for crowned or victorious. And that name was given to royal babies only. She's royalty. She's royalty. She's of a royal bloodline. Yes. And the Hungarians are from Central Asia. Uh, the early Greek, uh, that, that word Pisti in early Greek is Stefano, Stephen. So that's what it means in all the languages of Europe and ancient languages of Europe. But that's not her name. It's Pisti, which is Hungarian. The Hungarians came from Central Asia. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that was a, a first name probably in her family, but it's a man's name, mm -hmm. which indicates even more that it was an important family name. Even though she was a girl, she may have been the firstborn, and they gave that name to her. That's what happened to me. Loren is a man's name. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Pistis appears in Gnostic texts, which are related to Zoroastrian, the ancient Iranian uh, religion, in the 3rd to 4th century AD. And then uh, Pistici is um, in, in a, a, a province of uh, Mentera in southern Italy, and it's the ancient name is Basilicata, Basilica, mm -hmm. uh, the churches, sure, grand sure. churches and so forth. Now, Pistici, the chi, means the bloodline or the stock of the Pisti people or the Pisti tribe. Mm -hmm. So there's the, her link there with Pisti to Basilicata, and her uh, second middle name is Basile, which refers to Basilicata. Basile is a last name. Basilicata is um, in um, it's in the southern part of Italy, as I said, and it refers to Basilica and, and these ancient, very, very grand churches. Now, it's really interesting that in the fourth century, there was a uh, Saint Basilos, Basilios from that same name, who was the bishop of Caesarea, Roman Empire, and um, he was one of four men who started the Eastern Orthodox Church. So he was involved with Constantine and the um, the, the whole uh, schism uh, between the Catholic Church and uh, the ones who did not want to submit, the Christians who didn't want to submit to the Pope. So you see she has a royal, religious, uh, high-level religious uh, background, and you would probably call her part of the Pope, papal nobility. So... Um, so then, kate, okay, what does kate mean? Well, I looked up kate, it was only, there was only one reference to it, and it was to um, 
uh, a, a town, a village in Uttar Pradesh, which is northern India, and it's where the ancient Iranians spilled over the Himalayas from Central Asia when their population spilled up too much, and um, it's in the eastern part of the southern side of the Himalayas. Very, very old. All of these names and the roots of her names and all the associations go back uh, before the Christian period, before the Greeks even. So she is very ancient Iranian. Now, kate, if you take the eye off, um, is a very rare rice that is grown on the Caspian Slope uh, in Gilan province to the, the west in uh, northern Iran. And it's actually where Stalin was born. Stalin was Iranian. Mm. He was not Russian. Or Georgian. Or Georgian. Georgian. He was Iranian. Okay. And I have pictures of him when he was a young man. Yeah. And um, so uh, the mother of Ataturk was also from mm. Gilan. Now this rice um, is the precursor or it's the arborio rice of the Italians that the Iranians took to Italy. Arborio rice mm. is an ancient rice the Iranians grew on the Caspian Sea. So um, that was uh, also Kate. There are villages in, in uh, Iran in Fars, Gazdin, Khorasan, and Isfahan that are Kate. And uh, that those are all very, very old centers for uh, the Iranian culture. Mm -hmm. So there we have absolutely solid evidence sure. what her roots are. Now, if I could boil it down, yes. we see that ostensibly Linda P. Linda P. Mm -hmm. Kate was brought in because of her expertise in this antenna technology, mm -hmm. which I hope you'll talk about its application mm -hmm. yes. currently. Yes. Uh, 19 unique patents credit to her. And then mm -hmm. there's her husband who is a specialist in these, uh, these coding or material science. So that's the, the esoteric reason mm -hmm. why they're brought in. Yes, right? Right. But what I'm hearing is there's a much deeper metaphysical or esoteric yes. reason why she was brought here to UC Davis yes. and into the UC system. Yes. And this drama that's unfolding now, it might be a Punch and Judy show. That's what we're trying to figure out here. It might be just a dumb show for, for the public. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if so, it's very dangerous. If, if it's, these, it's very dangerous. If this hypothesis, yes. it's, it's a very strong one, I must admit. <laughs> um, but as the evidence accumulates, it'll be much more compelling, probably elevated to the level of theory. Mm -hmm. But I think we're in a very dangerous position if we have such people like this who are helming a you know, major institution. And I hope you will talk about her relationship to, because you mentioned her in passing, mm -hmm. uh, Janet Napolitano, mm -hmm. her background. Yes. Others of that, that, I guess they call them root races, mm -hmm. these, these royal lines that right. are controlling the destiny of humanity right. to the present. Please. Well, some of the others who are on the main stage today, Janet Napolitano, she's from the province, from Na where Naples is, right next to Basilicata. She's the University of California president, by the yes. way, ladies and gentlemen. Just yes. for your information, please go. And she is from the province uh, of Calabria, which is right next to, to the province by the Basilicata that, uh, that Chancellor Katehi came from. And uh, uh, Leon Panetta is another one. Leon Panetta, who was Minister, um, I'm sorry, Secretary of Transportation under Clinton. Then he was uh, head of the CIA under Obama for two years, and then he was moved to Secretary of Defense. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. Uh, gee, what ties all of those together? It's drugs. Mm. Ah, uh, yeah, Clinton built the Mina Airport in uh, Arkansas to bring China white heroin. The Chinese were paying back the, um, the Rockefellers for the um, development funds they loaned China. And so he built the airport. It's a um, free trade zone. The U.S. government has no jurisdiction. The, um, the um, uh, Walmart trucks and the Tyson chicken tr trucks go into that airport. They pick up the heroin, and they are the distributors around the United States. Just as a footnote, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Hopsicker has produced a DVD series, and he's written books on this, this very system. It may sound bizarre. Crazy, it's never really hit the, uh, the general public's uh, attention, but but what Lorraine is saying here has been explored and exposed by a number of investigative journalists. If you care to uh, follow up on it, check out the work of Daniel Hopsinger. Yes, that's correct. And also Dope Incorporated. Uh, dope Opium Incorporated, Daniel well, Hopsinger. This is a lot more than the opium war against the U.S. This is part of this global dope um, economy that's five times greater than the legitimate economy of, this, of, the, of the world. And uh, so this... Um, uh, this this Minette, uh, Mina Airport and um, and Panetta's uh, time in the CIA, of course, they run all the drugs. And then the Secretary of Defense. I am well, absorbing the this. Very involved Sorry. In the drug racketeering, uh, so forth and so on. I'm I mean, that's fascinated. what Vietnam War was about. It was getting uh, opium from the from the Himalayan foothills because Turkey stopped growing opium poppies. And so they had to find another source. And uh, someone's fucking smart. Uh, She's amazing, doing this uh, all from her memory. Drugs are just flooding the United States now. And for the last uh, about eight years, six or eight years, I've been reading JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. I've never seen um, articles about heroin addiction. Well, they're reporting it their article now in JAMA and what states it's going into and it seems to heroin use seems to increase when we're having wars or military conflicts in other countries and it's because the soldiers are self-medicating the depleted uranium weapons and the weaponry uh, residue that they're exposed to is making them so sick they're going on heroin to just ease the pain uh, but now in 2016 I'm getting a lot of feedback from students at Davis that uh, the Davis campus and off campus is flooded with heroin see I never would have known that yes you know, that completely bypassed. I thought maybe crystal methamphetamine, you know, or crank that I knew about. I know about marijuana and you know, alcohol, but I didn't She's understand. She's not a news reporter. No, this uh, is a professor. These the are two Northeast professors from UC Davis. Yes. There's all these different overdoses with upper class, upper middle class, yes. professional, quote unquote, white people. That's one of the first places it started that I read about in Vermont. Vermont. Yes, Vermont. in Vermont. So it's linked to this larger network of dope incorporated. Yes. We're talking about a global network with one template carrying all of this out. Mm -hmm. And it's from, originates with those ancient Iranian bloodlines. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have 10 uh, bloodline families that sit on a, uh, a, a council. And they're the ones who advise the Jesuits. The Jesuits work for the Iranian bloodlines. And the Jesuits were created by uh, um, Alessandro Farnese, who became Pope Paul III in the mm -hmm. Renaissance. And Fidel Castro is pure Iranian ancient bloodline, and he's directly descended from Pope Paul III. Okay, you're going to have to unpack that one for us here. <laughs> Fidel Castro? Fidel Castro. The idol of all the left yes. That means that in, in fucking... Yes. The, the liberator yes. of, uh, you know, El Pueblo? Yes. That Fidel Castro? That's Fidel Castro. What's the his name, the guy from school. Canada? What's the guy who's the Prime Minister of Canada right now? That means the Prime Minister of Canada is a direct lineage to the Pope.
That's why he's the, that's why he got into power and he's been doing all this fucked up shit in Canada. The guy with the hair. Trudeau, yeah. Trudeau is Fidel Castro's biological son. Wealthy person in the world? He is from, he's from the papal nobility family. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's from the Dukes of Castro. The Dukes and, uh, of Castro. Pope Paul III had three sons that he gave each of them a dukedom. The Duke of Castro, the Duke of Piacenza, and which is a city in northern Italy. That's where Castro's father was born. And you've done the genealogy? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Just so the yes. ladies and gentlemen understand that and this is just not fantasy. She's done and the, the genealogy. That Pope Paul III gave to his sons was the Duke of Parma. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was really shocked. And then I started looking at Spanish land grants in California. And there was a U.S. Supreme Court lawsuit in um, uh, the 1850s. And when the Spanish, Spanish government turned over the, their Spanish colonies in North America to the United States government, uh, there was a treaty made, the Treaty of um, Guadalupe, uh, Guadalupe and Hidalgo. 1848. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. And uh, the agreement between the two governments was that um, uh, land grant holders, Spanish land grant holders, would be allowed to retain the land they were granted by the Spanish. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the, the land was turned over to the U.S. government, the state of Cal California immediately sued to counteract, to reverse that, that treaty, uh, because they wanted all the land. And um, in that, during that... Um, that process the u.s supreme court ended up reviewing it and uh, they asked for all land grant um uh, uh people claiming they had spanish land grants title search, title search to uh, submit their claims mm -hmm. and the supreme court uh looked at each case and ruled whether it was a valid claim or not and so out of 850 claims that were made approximately they awarded or they upheld 670 and then i started looking at the names of the the uh, grantees and i was shocked because the uh, the greatest number and the largest amount of land was granted to people with the last name castro uh. And then I noticed what counties and what towns, because that's listed too, the modern towns, modern, modern cities, and um, almost all of the UC, <laughs> almost all of the University of California campuses are where Castro land grants are. It's and, beginning to come into focus now. And the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab, mm -hmm. uh, Livermore is a Spanish land grant to the Castros also. So mm -hmm. then I said, oh God, there's really a connection. And then I looked at UC Davis and I said, my God, they submitted a bid to have uh, the CERN uh, most advanced collider built here at UC Davis. And it is the, talking about the Large Hadron Collider. The Large collider. Hadron Collider. Okay. Yes, and Japan bid on it. Davis bid on it, or California did. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow it ended up uh, half in Switzerland and half in France. And I, I asked uh, Laurence, why did they do that? He said, well, then neither France nor Switzerland own it. Someone else controls it. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the um, the vested, these vested interests I'm talking about. And actually, it's those hidden bloodlines that funded the development of HARP and the Collider. From okay. the very beginning. Let's go back to yes. uh, Lawrence Livermore. Okay. Because it seems to be the institution that was uh, at the dawn of this, this right. uh, self-destructive hostage, high-level techno-hostage taking right. situation, this extortion scheme that you're going to right. outline for right. And perhaps you can talk about your own experience uh, at Lawrence Livermore. Yes. You worked there for, for time. Yes. I uh, worked at Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab from 1989 to 91. And um, I worked on the WIP Project Waste Isolation Pilot Program in New Mexico, which was to bury nuclear waste underground. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, all attempts to make uh, a storage facility for nuclear waste have failed in the United States, all of them. And when the New Mexico one failed, they um, just said, we're going to do it in, in Nevada. It's the last place we can do it at the Nevada test site where they've done 1,300 nuclear bomb tests. And even that has failed because they put it in an active volcanic zone. So 32 earthquakes a month happen where they're planning to store nuclear waste safely for 250,000 years. I don't think so. Mm. And um, so this, um, this, this is so crazy. It's very, very crazy. Um, but... Let's see, what was I talking We're about? We're talking about your, your background at Livermore, because oh, what yes, I'm trying to establish is that yes. you've done this external research, but you, you also have lived this. I mean, you, yes. you've worked in these institutions, yes. and so you're also bringing uh, the insights of someone who was working in the belly of the yes. East. So in 1991, I, um, I packed all my stuff in my car one day, and I drove out the gate of the Livermore lab, and I left my keys and my pager in the, the guardhouse, and I went home. I fired them. Mm -hmm. They didn't fire me. And with the University of California, they've gone into chancellors and vice chancellors' offices and marched them the guards to the, um, the, the, the border of the, the campus and said, get out of here, you're fired. And they were never allowed to remove their personal items. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm not going to let them do that to me. I'm leaving this place and I'm taking all my stuff and I'm going to fire them. And they've never stopped retaliating against me since then. That was 1989, but 91. But I'm glad that I had this experience. It's been hell in a lot of ways, but you have to be in their house. You have to live in their house to know who they are and what they are. And so that when you leave, you know how to challenge them. You know how to expose them because what they're doing is immoral. It's illegal. It's uh, insane. They are destroying this planet without our permission, without informing us, and without even having a good reason for doing it. They're just doing it because they can. Hmm. And um, I think that's what really uh, woke me up and um, just changed my whole life was taking this on. Okay. Well, I appreciate the, uh, the biographical element because I, I, I sense there, there's something that's driving you that goes deeper than pure intellectual curiosity. Oh, no, it's because I love people. It's yes. because I love Humanity. nature. I love living things. Mm -hmm. We live in a beautiful world. It's, the earth is so beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a game. This is not an academic no. exercise, neither for Lorraine or for myself. No. I am in their house. I am working in the belly of the beast. I have suffered, and I'm not going to talk about it too much today, uh, the repercussions of asking certain questions about my own workplace, which is yes. I'm entitled to do as a citizen, as a sovereign human being, as, a, as an academic, as, a, as an American. I'm, I'm entitled to do that, and I will exercise those rights uh, to the best of my ability. But it takes research such as this. Mm -hmm. Subscribe. Research such as this will provide us the intellectual, the historical, the analytical framework to understand what we are facing.
because so far these people have been very good in veiling the truth mm. and hiding it because mm. the Rockefellers own the University of Chicago. The, the Russell Trust runs Yale University. Mm -hmm. All these uh, bloodlines control information, scholarship, and every single aspect of sciences, of course, almost every single aspect of our lives that uh, shape our world. And what I learned at UC Berkeley, um, I was working on uh, gender equity issues and minority equality and things like that uh, in the early 90s, and, and there were 500 lawsuits against the University of California for gender discrimination and um, and also um, uh, ethnic ethnic issues also. And um, and so I learned, I started investigating, well, what is the University of California? Why are they breaking all these laws and everything? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that Dwight and Gilman started the land grant, the U.S. land grant program, and that was to have the U.S. government allot land in each state to build a state university. This is the Muriel Act, yes, correct? That's yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. And it was to educate the farmers, the pioneers, to create teachers and, um, and military and, and farmers to educate them more, and it was to create a bigger economy. It was to create wealth, new wealth in the United States. It was to benefit everyone, not just the, the businessmen and the oligarchs, but also the people. And uh, so Dwight and Gilman, uh, they had everything to do with setting up uh, UC Berkeley, which was the first Berkeley campus. So they were very intimately involved with the University of California. And then they went on to um, establish the other state universities and colleges. But from the very beginning, all of these institutions were exempt from state laws. This is what I found out. Yes. They are a government within a government. That's right. A sovereign entity. And they actually were set up to benefit the, um, the oligarchs and industrialists and so forth who went to the Ivy League colleges. Sure. So the state universities were set up to train workers for the ruling elite. And so you need to understand the history and the ancient history of issues. Public education system was designed to create workers. And as a footnote, President Gilman, who was the first president to really put his stamp on the, the University of California system, was a member of the Order of Death. He was yes. a skull and bones person. They were both skull and bones. They were both skull and bones yes. people. And uh, perhaps we can range into this, into this uh, area a little bit later because there's a, there's an occult overlay. Absolutely. Very, very much so. And the origin of skull and bones was in uh, Europe and Germany. Sure. 1822. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so um, it all My brain all, moves this fast. Can't, it, it all sounds uh, bizarre and everything until you begin putting all of these pieces together. And then you find more and more evidence. And pretty soon you have an airtight case using government data. Sure. <laughs> and published books by yes. quote-unquote reputable scholars right. who are always just slightly unable to complete the picture right. purposely right. because the academic profession does not allow you to fully bring all these different uh, elements of knowledge and information together right. in a comprehensive whole that really gives away the game. Right. This is why what we're doing today here is yes. uh, so exciting to me. So let's go back and look at the history. Please. Uh, so uh, uh, Chancellor Katehi was hired from the University of Illinois, which is a military-based university. It's where the first computer and computer language was made for the Navy. The Navy is there. It's their research lab, their university. And ENIAC That's where uh, my great gra my great grandfather went there. Language, and then later on, in that engineering lab. University of Illinois also. But that's where Katehi and her husband landed. Mm -hmm. And there she ended up. Um, her grad students of, students, of course, did the research, but she ended up with 19 antenna patents. And these antennas now, um, waveforms, are the new mechanism to enslave society, to take over the whole entire world. That's what HARP is. Their HARP base is all over Antarctica, and that's in training the Earth's magnetic field. And the animal studies for mind control were done here and are still being done here on the UC Davis campus. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the 60s, the students would come back from that secret facility, and there were students who did work study. So they worked in, in the monkey colony, and they said that the monkeys have the top of their heads cut off and their wires coming out of them, and they can transmit waveforms uh, to them and make them uh, just climb up and down in their cage all day long. They can command them to do anything they want to. And um, it sounded so out there that I didn't pay very much attention to it. But now I understand as I see this all unfolding and other experiences I had. Speaking of the literature, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to check out a book by Dr. Jose Delgado yes. called Toward a Psycho-Civilized Society. Yes. And you have photographs in there with the, yes. the monkeys, the simians, yes. with part of their skulls uh, removed. And, and I think the technology is called stem sievers. Yes. So this is decades-old technology. Yes. Who knows what they're doing now? But you're saying that the antenna, antenna technology that Linda, the, quote, the, unquote, PBT, yes. uh, is responsible for is integral to this new phase in mind control? It's, the, it's the delivery system. The delivery system. Okay. Yes. Please go ahead. And Delgado also wrote a book, uh, The Biology of Aggression. And so they can use these frequencies to cause food riots. They could use these frequencies. Is in, it's in Rwanda, that big, huge massacre in Rwanda. The toilet Those paper were fucking Russian, Ukrainian fire. oligarchs who sent thugs down to Rwanda. The whole place had been wired up with antennas. These guys had been hooked up to computers, and they were programmed before they went down to Rwanda to carry out the slaughter. And it was plain and simply so that the Russian and Ukrainian oligarchs could steal all the wealth of the colonists. And the order was to slaughter all of them, every single white person, mm -hmm. and steal all of their wealth, go into the banks, strip their bank accounts, strip, uh, take all their securities. Uh, That's from what's happening in South, South Africa the, uh, right the Africans now. There, um, had no money, so they Kill were used the to cover the That's slaughter of the saying. white people. Mm -hmm. and, now, closer to home, this is speculative, of course. Did you see something similar taking place recently down in Burlingame, California, when the social justice warriors started rioting and oh, acting up? Could you, I didn't that, know about that. Oh, yes, yes, overturning uh -huh. police cars, uh -huh. vandalizing them, beating up uh, supporters of party atheists. This is when Donald Trump came into town. Oh, Anti-Trump yeah. protesters. What you're describing yes. there uh, was caught on camera. Lunatics. People, such as uh, yes. InfoWars news yes. gatherers. Yes. And it's been seen by millions of people all over the world. Yes, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see a real yes. live, because Rwanda might be removed in time and distance from us, but if you want to see this type of control being rolled out here and now, right in, in our area, in the United States of America, take a look at that YouTube footage and break it down. I suspect that, they, that the antenna rays were out there. Absolutely, were there. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. All of the UC campuses now, the street corners have been taken up. They put uh, uh, surveillance and, and other technology packages into the ground. They dug down five feet and then they cemented it in so that it can't be removed. And it's hooked up to the street lights, to the smart meters, to cell phones. It's all integrated now. That's what Katehi's technology is about. It's about integrating all of that. So you get a huge array of antennas that are all integrated and you control everything. Hmm. So the heart model has been 
regionalized or localized? It's been localized. It's been um, made more granular. Mm -hmm. It's more it's more uh, powerful, but it's more miniaturized. Mm -hmm. It's uh, gotten smaller and smaller and more efficient and had a bigger and bigger impact. Okay. So it's a creeping um, it's a creeping um, mechanism for controlling humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been teaching here at UC Davis for 20 years now, and beginning about eight years ago, perhaps even 10 years ago, I began to see a 180 degree shift in the intelligence level, intellect, mm -hmm. analytical ability, mm -hmm. um, uh, expressive ability. Intellectual yes. ability, of course, I mentioned. Yes. And in, in attending that, I also saw a gradual acceleration of hostility and yes. anger. Yes. And much of this has been directed towards myself yes. and towards other faculty people. That's right. And I'm reading that this is, has been taking, taking place coast to coast, north to south at different universities. So where do the students, undergraduate, not at university, mm -hmm. where do they fit into this picture? Are they being used as a shock troop for this transformation? Oh, absolutely. It's even worse than that. Right? Yeah. But let me tell you what it's like in the 60s. In yeah. the 60s, when I was a student at UC Davis, I used to go home to Santa Barbara for holidays and summers. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, or just uh, Easter break or something. And I noticed that when I was driving back on Highway 5, I start getting really depressed about coming back to Davis. Mm. Something, this horrible depression and overwhelming fear and, and um, un uneasiness came over me and I just never could understand it. But um, it would always start about 150 miles from here. Mm. And so very recently I was reading about um, heart facilities in California. Well, there's a heart facility in Visalia mm. and it's to transmit Voice America to countries around the world. And there's always also a naval air base in Visalia, a mm. US Navy air base. So that transmission was coming out of that heart facility in Visalia. And that was a long time ago, that was in the 60s. But recently a woman in Texas, I was telling her about that. She said, my friend, has a son who's at Davis now and he's complaining about the same thing mm. and there's also a very very large antenna on the south side of the freeway um, on your way from Davis into Sacramento there's a huge antenna out in the middle of a field that's also a Navy antenna uh -huh. and that's integrated with the harp technology and with antennas up in Oregon mm. so they've been doing this since the 50s my gosh so these and are like carrier waves that are affecting these are, behavior yes. these are elf extra long frequency or ultra long frequency carrier waves and they put the applications on that carrier wave so right now they're transmitting suicide um, um, frequencies that make people cause uh, create uh, commit suicide and this is all over the Davis campus mm. it's all over California there's signs and billboards all over San Francisco right on the main market street they're huge 10 foot high um, uh, displays along the sidewalk right next to the curb and their posters with hotlines for suicide hotlines if you feel like committing suicide call the hotline and they have it on the other side also so the pedestrians walking down the sidewalk can see it mm. and um, uh, they uh, my Native American friends have said uh, the young people are committing suicide five four and five a night on the reservations mm -hmm. and the reservations have the Indian reservations in the United States they have the mineral rights to them they were put on the poorest land but they have 85 percent of the energy sources the uranium the coal uh whatever that creates energy um the oil and gas and they had the misfortune of um of, of being given that great wealth and they said to me many times why can't we just give them the mineral rights and have them leave us alone I said they don't work that way so these uh technologies now what is so alarming about what's happening in the universities is that in the fall of 2015 less than a year ago the state university cap uh, campuses were turned over to Satanism Okay, let's stop at this juncture. How do we substantiate that? Where do we look in order to verify Bro, that? Bro, this shit is well, fucking we're doing crazy. So much here. And this, this has to do with uh, Katehi also. Okay. The, um, that doesn't surprise me. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. The fall, we had a rollout of, yes. of the satanic agenda. Yes. Yes. All right. So I started seeing satanic sam uh, symbols on and off UC Berkeley, the UC Berkeley campus. Mm -hmm. And for instance, I saw the, um, the head of the goat uh, which Baphomet. Yeah, Baphomet. Um, in, the go to in students' windows, uh, I started seeing stars turned upside down um, with so that the two two points of the stars represented the goat's horns. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw American flags turned upside down and backwards on the balconies of the students' apartments. That was representing overthrow of the U.S. government. Uh, Laurence and I have recorded uh, the ski team, UC Berkeley ski team, in the house next door to us during parties. Uh, they were drinking and dancing and everything, and they were talking in loud voices about overthrowing the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. now, now, this is anecdotal, though. This no, is we have tape recordings. Well, you, you've, you've recorded it, but you're interpreting it. So, uh, do you have any sort of documents? I've been reading it in, in the uh, corporate press about the growing popularity of, of religions such as Wicca. So they're just portraying it as a form of religious expression rather than a satanic takeover. And I think, you know, I agree with you. There's something deeper here. That, oh, there's much more. Okay. Yes, much more. But, but I want to, for the, for the sake of, of the skeptics out there, um, beyond the anecdotal, and I know you recorded, mm -hmm. you photographed these signs. I've seen them as well. YouTube mm -hmm. is full of, you know, there's a satanic uh, ritual taking place at the Super Bowl at the American Music Awards. The internet's full of that, that type mm -hmm. of um, display. So we know something's going on. I want to find out definitively, is there some sort of Department of Defense or something like equivalent to the, the National Security Memorandum 200 that was workshop a white paper that says we are going to convert the, the universities and college in the United States to Satanism? It doesn't come out directly like that, but it's happening not just in California just on the UC campuses. Mm -hmm. It's happening across the United States. It's happening in Europe. Um, for instance, uh, uh, in the UC campuses now, uh, in the, in the uh, land-grant university campuses around the US, there's very heavy recruiting with very young entering students, female students, to, um, to become prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of student prostitution now which is encouraged uh, by these sort of underground networks, and they're coming from the campus. But in Europe, they have referred to this coming out of the military. And we know that when the US um, destroyed Yugoslavia, Dynkark went in, and the first thing they did was to begin recruiting 
recruiting young women who were starving to death and, and you know, uh, living in horrible conditions to be prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And I saw those beautiful Yugoslavian girls in uh, Tokyo, in Ropongo, which is the nightclub area of Tokyo. And they were obviously on drugs. They were standing in doorways in pairs, and they were um, they were looking for customers. Mm -hmm. um, this is happening uh, at the University of Michigan. Um, they have a satanic group active uh, on and off the, the university campus. Well, at Harvard University, uh, some student organization they claim to be uh, satanic or luciferian was going to hold a black mass on campus. That's they, right. They did call it off. That's right. But they, I think they were testing the waters to see how far they could take this agenda. Well, off the campus is a satanic group, a formal group, in, uh, Mich in where the University of Michigan is. Is that Lansing? I'm not sure uh, what city it is. University of Michigan? But they East were, Lansing is Michigan State. Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor, yes. okay. okay. So they, uh, in the mainstream media, they reported a an official satanic group, right. organized group, mm -hmm. uh, was going down to Louisiana to do a satanic ritual for the city council. Right. And, um, and it was like there was a big question about whether the city council wanted them to do it or not, but it ended up happening. And now there's a new chapter of that satanic uh, group in Louisiana, in that city. I think it was New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is coming out of the military. Okay. It's part of the occult. Right. So the this is perhaps traced back to Colonel Michael Aquino? Oh, that, with that absolutely. It traces back to the, um, the the Jesuits. It traces back to Mesopotamia, to the Kabbalah and the Talmud, which were uh, magic cult instruction books. Mm -hmm. And they recommended pedophilia in children, but they had to be under eight years old. I've and literally been saying that. The, the Talmud. And, um, in the Talmud. Practicing Jews, I'm not including them, mm -hmm. uh, they follow the uh, Torah. Mm -hmm. The Talmud and the Kabbalah are satanic The Babylonian cults. Talmud. Yes, so yes. Okay. Those are satanic cults. And are those satanic cults controlled or were they created by these ancient Iranian bloodlines? Yes, they were. They Please were. Uh, well, uh, for instance, uh, the Aldo Brandinis. Aldo Brandini is one of the ancient Iranian bloodlines. It's a famous Italian family. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aldo Al is the, Dob is devil, mm -hmm. Dini. Dope, dope the people of the, of the devil. Yeah, the people of the devil. Wow. So they are, they're definitely satanic. They're proud of it. They're open about it. Uh, we have um, a website, lorenmaray.info, and we have a Rothschild ball with photographs of the Rothschilds and their guests and, and members of their family uh, uh, doing satanic practices. This is the mask ball photos? The mask ball. And by the way, they're called Venetian masks, aren't they? Yes, they are. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so we can see the cultural and the historical continuities, ladies and gentlemen. And, and the uh, Venetians were Iranians. Well, yeah, you, you alluded to that. Yes. Why I yes. interjected that, because yes. I'm, uh, I'm interested in masking. But the Middle East, these Mesopotamians, all of Eurasia, we know now from DNA studies done, done over the last five years, especially by Russia, all of Eurasia was settled by Central Asians. Please talk a little bit about the DNA studies. And I, yes. I assume that these studies are coming out of the Human Genome Project, right? Is that, um, no, they wouldn't be coming out of the, the okay. Human Genome Project, which is American. They're coming out of Russian okay. scientific research. All right. Because yes. this DNA, from our conversations, yes. this DNA research provides the scientific backing mm -hmm. that helps support this, this uh, hypothesis or this theory in the making. Um, it's refutable. It's ironclad. And I think this is probably the most uh, important. Uh, development in, in this right. kind of research. It's, it's hard science. It's not fantasy. It's yes. supported by right. definitive DNA analysis. And yes. You can trace the distribution yes. of these different peoples, these different yes. tribal groups, and, yes. and how their culture and their religious practices migrated yes. across the world, and how they have been transmitted to us down here to 2016 are right. in people like right. Lili Dikatehi. Right. Please. And so these ancient Iranian tribes um, moved into Europe and the Middle East. So the um, the Basques are ancient Iranian bloodlines. From, Is there a DNA? Yes, report? from the DNA. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the um, the Berbers in North Africa in the Altai Mountains. They the the um, Basques, the Berbers, and the Kurds all came from the Hittites. And they, DNA research. Yes, on that. this is okay. from DNA research and also language similarities. All right. And uh, so it's a multidisciplinary effort. And the these disciplines are all compartmentalized. They're, they're compartmentalized. You, you're achieving yes. a grand Inter synthesis. Inter yes, synthesize yes. it. Okay. I've distilled the information right. into a picture that makes sense. Okay. And it's all internally consistent as well. Right. So um, you take multi factors, you start putting them together and relating them, um, and then you find more things. They they introduce new things that you wouldn't have thought of. How could I ever think in a million time, million years, I knew that arboreal rice had to be from Iran. Mm -hmm. And, um, but how would I ever imagine that investigating Katehi's origins <laughs> would bring me to the source of arboreal rice in Iran? Or the Familia Castro. Yeah, or the Familia right. Castro. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, different languages. so for instance, with Castro, uh, the, it, this is a different kind of a DNA study, but it's physical characteristics and how powerful they are. Um, I said, okay, Alejandro Farnese, or Pope Paul III, worked for a Borgia. And um, who was the Pope? And when that Borgia died, um, Lucretia Borgia was his daughter, the infamous Lucretia Borgia. And so when uh, that Pope died, he made uh, Alessandro Farnese a cardinal at 24, and then he made him Pope as his successor. And so I took photographs of paintings of Alessandro Farnese when he was young, and then when he was Pope, and then when he was a very old man as a Pope in his 80s or something. And then I took paintings of his sons and their coats of arms. The coats of arms are always on the paintings. And um, and then I collected uh, Pope Paul III's grandsons, put photos of them. They were cardinals. And then I found a painting of Fidel Castro in black, a black, like a Spanish hat or a monk's hat, and uh, a black robe with just a tiny white collar, you know, peeking through. And I said, what's this? Well, it's his portrait, which will have his coat of arms added to it after he dies. Mm -hmm. And then that will be put in some palace in uh, Italy. Okay. In Piacenza, one of their palaces in Piacenza. <laughs> and then I said, okay, well, um, uh, oh, there, the, the way, well, what happened um, in the um, the Hellenic period is that the Farnese's, one of them was uh, one of the generals, the, one of the eight generals who guarded Alexander the Great. 
And Alexander the Great appointed him to be the governor. He was the, the, governor, the governor of ancient Egypt. And when Alexander the Great died, um, he made himself a pharaoh. And Alexander the Great had given his sister to this general to marry. So they became the pharaoh um, and the pharaoh's wife. And after well, that, the Ptolemy, uh, almost all the Pharnaseses have a middle name. The or Ptolemy name, Alexander, dynasty. Alejandro or Alessandro. So Castro's name is Fidel Alejandro Castro. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then you can trace them even before that back into Mesopotamia. So we've got the genealogy, as you yes. did with uh, Phoebe Katehi. Yes. We've got the DNA, and you were talking about the physiological resemblance. The physiological. Please break that down. So please. when I got all these pictures together, mm -hmm. and I had um, a photograph of uh, Fidel Castro when he was a teenager or something with no facial hair, mm -hmm. and so I got a painting of Philip I of Spain, the first, um, uh, the first uh, Habsburg king of Spain, mm -hmm. and um, uh, he had a certain kind of lips. They were very thick, and they, they were sort of had vertical lines in them or folds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a mutation. It's a genetic mutation. It's actually a defect. Mm -hmm. And I compared it to Fidel Castro's lips. He mm -hmm. has Habsburg lips. Mm -hmm. It's indistinguishable. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely a bloodline. And then I did this to John Kerry. John Kerry's family were Jews in the Habsburg Empire in Czechoslovakia, and they were Huff, Huff and Judah, house Jews. So they were very, very high in the court, and they advised the kings. Teresa Heinz Kerry is from a Portuguese Huff and Judah family, mm -hmm. and her family advised the Portuguese court. And uh, then I found a painting of John Kerry's ancestor on his mother's side. She was a Forbes, right. not okay. Malcolm Forbes. Uh, the Opium family Forbes. The Opium family, the Yale yes. Forbes. And I found the first sea captain, Forbes sea captain, in 1823, this painting was painted. And um, it's in his uh, uh, house, which is now a museum in Boston. Those are the Boston Brahmins. They were the, the drug cap dealing captains. And um, and I, I almost, I just couldn't believe it. Oh my God. His, that ancestor, Captain Forbes, who had three of the fastest clipper ships when he was 24, he John Kerry looks exactly like him. Mm. So these are ancient bloodlines that they keep. They know how to breed, who to breed into the line, um, and how to keep the physical characteristics. How could someone 150 years later, 175 years later, how could he look exactly like, how could John Kerry look exactly like him? That's that's like 10 generations or 8 generations. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I realized they have very, very strict breeding, breeding uh, programs. And for instance, uh, with the royal families, the popes had to always give permission for two members of a royal family to marry. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, especially if they were on the throne. And there could be no... Uh, relatives or family association for seven generations or they in order to marry and when the uh, Roman empires collapsed the Western Empire collapsed first the Eastern Empire collapsed in um, the 1500s late 1400s um, the uh, these ruling part families wanted to reassemble the Habsburg Empire remember the Roman Empire became the Habsburg Empire and they wanted to recreate that Roman Empire and they did it by intermarrying very closely related people but they had to all have land that were pieces of part of the Roman, Holy Roman Empire mm -hmm. and so there were there was so much inbreeding in the Habsburgs uh, the Jesuits did it actually and um, they did it um, I mean, one particular Habsburg prince, who was to be the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, had so much inbreeding that recently Germany did DNA studies on the whole Habsburg, Habsburg bloodlines. And um, they said he had the DNA uh, of someone who had been the product of um, sex between uh, a sister and a brother. Hmm. That's Egyptian, isn't it? That's, That's right? Egyptian. That's a dynastic yes, yes, yes. So what you're saying also, uh, before we leave mm -hmm. this point or move on past it, is that certain physical traits are also passed on. Yes, they are. They're telltale yes. physical traits because of this breeding program, including yes. mouth structure yes. in the case of Fidel, the yes. brow, the bridge, uh, the, the yes. nose structure. Yes, intelligence, beauty. Uh, there are many, many characteristics that they're breeding for, but it can also be uh, a way to wage war. So instead of waging all these wars to reunite the Habsburg Empire, the war was in bed. Uh -huh. So they did it through inbreeding. And then they can uh, reintegrate the well, empire. Well, after, after, about two, after about 200 years, a bloodline will just die out because they're infertile from so much inbreeding. Mm -hmm. And so they would just take a cadet family, one of the other branches, and they plug them in. Mm -hmm. And so it was the same bloodline. But if you look at the Habsburgs, they all have strawberry blonde hair. It's mm -hmm. reddish blonde. And um, there's a Pope, Orsini, who had reddish blonde hair. And I think he was involved in the, the Habsburg line. Okay. Well, that helps explain how by examining portraiture and today photography, yes. and perhaps uh, some forensic scientists yes. can break it down as well, measure yes. eye distances and eye color, yes. and of course DNA. We're going to be uh, plugging in some of the missing yes. pieces of this puzzle yes. here to further support this, this hypothesis yes. of this, this ancient bloodline that's at the head of our yes. civil world civilization. Yes. And, so, and, and Nina's harm. They want, yes. to, yes. gather, they want to exterminate most of the yes. human population, regardless of race. They, they do. They, they have their, they've had their own breeding program, especially through the universities. Mm -hmm. I had 53 wedding, uh, I mean, marriage proposals at Davis and in the UC system, and I was going crazy. It was frightening me to death. I thought they were crazy. I didn't know why they were asking me to marry them. Mm -hmm. Well, they were uh, Kun Lo, the low Kun Lo banking yes. family. Mm -hmm. They were, um, uh, uh, there was another one, a couple more. Anyway, they were all banking. Oh, um, Goldman Sachs. There was a Sachs in, introduced to me in the geology department at, at Davis in uh, Berkeley, and he said, you're really a catch, and, and I just, I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Now I understand. These are breeding programs. And you were targeted yes. as a broodmare. Yes. That's yes. how Diana Spencer yes. described herself. Yes. She was a broodmare. <coughs> a broodmare to help regenerate she was a broodmare. She was a broodmare because her biological father was Sir Jimmy Goldsmith. Sure. And the Goldsmiths and the Rothschilds came from Frankfurt, Germany in the mid-1700s to establish banking in London, to take over sure. that banking center. Mm -hmm. And they intermarried. They are Iranians. They are not Jews. They're Iranians. And so that put the Iranian bloodline into the royal family of England. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out. You see, um, uh, Kate Middleton's mother's maiden name was Goldsmith. Mm -hmm. So they have a hidden history too. True.
And, and there's a book, a fairly decent biography, it's called Billionaire, and it's about Sir James Goldsmith. Yes. And it will tell you about his marriages, his affairs, yes. his dalliances. Yes. Uh, but this might be slightly off topic, though, but it seems like bastardy is really important to understanding this. Oh, they, yes. they breed outside of these families. Oh, yes. Lines, but yes. how do these bastards, in this big term, yes. how do they figure into this ruling system? Well, one of them is, uh, one of those bastards is uh, Hitler. He was Rothschild. a Rothschild. Sure. An another, I thought that was just an apocryphal. No. Was, okay. Another one is Bill Clinton's mother, who was the illegitimate child of Winthrop Rock sure. Rockefeller, who was governor of Arkansas. Sure. That's why Clinton is uh, with president, and now Hillary Clinton. She's actually, her middle name was Rodham. What I, I looked it up, and it was shortened from Brodonsky, and she's from a Jewish family in Brodonsky, Poland. Mm -hmm. and, um, Wasn't that her stepfather? Or her natural her father? Radonsky was her natural oh, okay. father. Yeah. Because she also had a stepfather who was Jewish. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, no, she's, okay. she's Eastern European. So, so they were bred? They were bred. They were that was up. a breeding. Okay. Yes, that was a breeding program. And just out of curiosity, because this is in the news lately, there's some uh, some talk that Chelsea Clinton was the offspring of Webster Hubble and Hillary Clinton. Who was Webster Hubble? I know. I, don't know. I, I know he was an advisor to the Clinton family, oh. but she's a dead ringer for Webster Hubble. Oh, oh, well, she's not the child of Bill Clinton. Nobody cares in those families. They just they just breed who they're told to breed to. So why was Bill Clinton. Uh, Sarah, or he was unable to breathe. They, they didn't want that bloodline. They wanted the other one. They wanted the Rod Radinsky one? Uh, bloodline? Mm -mm. No, they wanted the Hubble. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm trying yeah, to figure out. I don't out. know who he is. Okay, so. that's on the agenda for yeah. research. We're deputizing. People yeah. are watching. Yeah. We're deputizing you as researchers because, as you're finding out, it's not coming out of academia. <laughs> Most of the exciting research and the insights uh, are, 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 aren't bound by these. Another one areas. is the royal family of Monaco. Uh, and Grace Kelly. Yes, uh, um, Prince Rainier was actually the son of a um, Algerian, I uh, know, a Moroccan uh, housemate. I didn't know that. And the Prince of Monaco. And he was sterile, so his wife had a baby. With, with um, no one exactly knows who, mm -hmm. but you know how beautiful they are, uh, Princess Caroline oh, and, yeah. and Princess uh, um, Stephanie. Stephanie, and how gorgeous, very handsome Prince Rainier was. Uh, that's because his mother was half Moroccan. Mm -hmm. She was Berber. This is the ancient Iranian bloodline <laughs> read back into her. Another one is. Where does the Kelly line come in? She's Irish American. Uh, a Catholic. Uh, she was more than that. She oh, was blonde, and, blonde and blue eyes, so right. she's Iranian. She's Iranian. That's, that's, a, that's what you're referring to. Yes. to this mutation. Yes. Yes. The blue eyed blonde yes. mutation. Yes. How you can, can yes. trace this, this blood through physiological. Right. Yeah, she's, yes. she's you know, world class beauty. Yes, very beautiful. Down today, which yes. we're still yes. admiring her movies with, yes. you know, Cary Grant. And, right. But you see, she's mm -hmm. Irish, and the Irish were Iranian. Please expand on that. Because that's so counterintuitive. Well, the, uh, the, uh, these uh, Iranians with mutations feel, they felt more comfortable, the blonde and the redheads. Mm -hmm. You know, they, didn't, they don't have the right pigment. They very fair skin. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so they feel, they felt more comfortable at, in colder climates or at higher altitudes. Mm -hmm. So they migrated up into Scandinavia mm -hmm. and to uh, the British Isles. And uh, there are a lot of ginger men in Ireland. Well, that's Iranian blood. And uh -huh. it has to be, remember, it's a recessive gene. So it has to be from the male and the female. Is there a DNA study on this recessive gene and tracing Irish people, oh, quote unquote, to yes. Iranian? Oh, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Just so that the viewers a, understand that yes. this is not just being pulled out of a hat here. And this is science we're yes. talking about. This is science, science-based. It's mm -hmm. solid, and I really trust these recent uh, Russian DNA studies. They did them very carefully, and they did them for a very specific purpose. I wanted to ask about that. Politically, why for are the Russians doing instance, this? Please. For instance, <laughs> there's all of this uproar in the Ukraine now because the Ukrainians are saying, we speak Ukrainian, and the Russians, the pro-Russian people, are speaking Russian. In their, this their is Russian seven years ago. Ukrainians. We speak Ukrainian. Well, it's the Bol Bolsheviks who made up a pidgin language and called it Ukrainian to set up a dynamic that divided the, the Ukrainian uh, they made a Hegelian dialectic mm -hmm. artificially. They're all the same people. Mm -hmm. They came from Scandinavia into Kiev. They're called the Rus. Which is red. Rus, yes, That's red. Mm -hmm. And if you we watched the Ukrainian war for uh, two years, and there would be all these soldiers, some were blonde, the Ukrainians, and a lot of them had dark hair, and then all of a sudden, a little video clip would come on from the battlefield for that day, mm -hmm. and there would be a soldier standing there with ginger red flaming hair, and you go, oh my God, where did he come from? Mm -hmm. And there were uh, Viking colonies all over the Ukraine on the rivers for thousands of years, mm -hmm. and in Turkey. There were redheads all over Turkey sure. also. All the way down through Rome, right? Yes. The Varangian Guard. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And so all of these were ancient Iranians without mutation who went into Scandinavia to a more comfortable, a colder climate, and then they came down through the Mediterranean on their ships and colonized the Mediterranean, and Ukraine, and Turkey, and the mm -hmm. Crimea. Mm -hmm. So this marriage between Grace Kelly, Irish Catholic, Irish American, and Prince Rainier of Monaco was really a homecoming. Iranian it's bloodline. It's a genetic homecoming. It's a yes, it was right. Iranian bloodline. And you had the power of the entire world focused on this. This was the biggest wedding until Princess Diana married Charles. This was That's a, right. a world historical right. event. It was a fairy tale princess bride yes. type of scenario. Yes. All right. So now, you had that energy focused on, on the, the consummation of these right. these lines that right. were coming back and they, infusing. They keep re this is the crazy. Mm -hmm. The chi, the chi in Italian, like mm -hmm. um, elder, let's see, like um. um Medici. Medici, yeah. She means the um, the stock, the bloodline you're from, or the tribe. Mm -hmm. It means DNA is what it means. Right. And it's always through the female. It's not through the male. It's mm -hmm. through the female. And they also breed their animals through the female. That's the most important breeding. breeding uh, in the breeding pair, the female is the most important. And it's because uh, the, the, um, the DNA and the RNA in the mitochondria uh, is, is separate from the DNA and RNA in the nucleus of the cell. And it's the mitochondria that provide all the energy for the body and body functions. So in the organs that use the most energy, the highest percentage of, of, uh, de of uh, mitochondria are in those cells, and it's the brain cells and the heart cells. So when, when radiation passes through a cell, it can miss the nucleus, but it can't miss the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And so when it damages the DNA in the mitochondria and the RNA, then you
I like listening to things like that on two times the speed. It keeps me enraptured. I was sucked into that. So what? Now I have like literally like so much that I need to research now. That's gonna this is gonna give me like a week's worth of stuff to fucking look up. I want to find this lady, what she thinks about what I want to see, like her. Let me see if I can find nuclear age. Her. Yeah. Okay. Lauren, Lauren. She hasn't made any videos in seven years. Oh, God, did they kill her? Where, like, uh, I don't even, like, I don't even know, like, how to, like, I don't even, I'm just. Her name is Lauren Moret, but it's spelled different. It's spelled L-E-U-R-E-N. Lauren, like, this is what she looks like. Um, so she has a YouTube channel. But she hasn't posted on here in like seven years. The ruling elite have been carrying out secret nuclear wars for the purpose of depopulation since World War II under the guise of atmospheric testing for the national security. Dude, she's talking about fucking chemtrails. They're putting fucking radiation in our skies. I wouldn't be surprised for one fucking second. Uh, Desira, if you want to find this video, um, look up Professor Hamamoto. <laughs> ben Shapiro does have two, two times the speed. Have you ever listened to Ben Shapiro on two times the speed? Someone made a joke about that today. No. There, I said the N-word. And I'm realizing that I can't actually say out loud because if I say the words, um, I'll probably get banned. Because today I woke up to this because a bunch of videos I posted a month ago are getting these and one more of these will result in that. This one, I literally just read a document from a government hearing. That's all. Don't read official government documents. In this one, I just read Wikipedia pages about who published music last year in the top 100 charts. That was hateful content. In this one, I just realized that the security guard for Michael Jackson was the security guard for Diddy. Don't do that. That's hateful content. But the real reason I couldn't say the hook I wanted to say is because this is my TikTok shop portal. And you can see in the month of February, this is what I was told because I helped small businesses 
sell their products because small businesses are awesome. But then this is what hit my bank account. This was my view payment for the month of February. They always pay the 15th of the next month and they don't say what they're paying you for, but this was my views and that was the right amount. So this is actually what this was supposed to say. So where'd all the rest of that go? TikTok, Cause it didn't go to them and it didn't go to me. So I've been busy uh, doing things like multiple hour live streams, saying whatever the hell I want on platforms where you can actually speak in words. And I know a lot of you think that uh, TikTok is where you get your news. No, it's not. There's no news on TikTok when this is happening. It's not news, guys. That is just a controlled media landscape. If you can't read government documents or else you get banned. And that's why we're all moving to this other platform whose name is actually just a letter now. Ooh wee. I tell you guys who what. You can pray all you want. I will not get sick to my stomach. Can't wait till I have a sink.
Come on, you butthole. There you go. I do live in a bus. I get sucked in my own little world. When I'm doing something, I get like in flow, you know? Just a squirrel. 
splash of olive oil so the butter doesn't burn. Your mom's a cheeseburger. Do, 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 do. What's going on? We're making an authentic Italian meal that I copied off of some girl from the internet. From her grandmother, actually. I'm making Nana's, Nana's pasta tonight again. Because it fucking was so good last night. So, we're doing it again. Pretty excited about it. I was literally about to go to the kitten to do the thing. He said I looked like a cheeseburger. I said your mom's a cheeseburger. Ooh, my back just cracked from moving. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat down. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off really quickly because I gotta go do my chickens. It's time. Uh, oh, it's chilly out. Thank goodness the fire is working. I lit that fire at exactly the right time. Go get it. Good boy. I need to give him water. And make sure his water has got stuff in it. That was water bowl. I need to check his water bowl. <gasps> oh my gosh, I have some pesto. Oh, I'm fucking adding pesto to this.
Do you have to eat pesto hot or can you just eat it cold? Refrigerate unused portion. Can I just eat this cold? I think they're just hungry. Hey, Terry Tomato. <laughs> Fucking hey. Everything is scary to a vegan. Should I heat the pesto up? Like, uh, or I'll just toss it with the hot pasta, right? I don't have to, like, cook it, cook it. I just can just toss it with the hot pasta and the onion sauce, right? Oh, I know you don't. It's just funny that everyone's talking, calling me food. And then she said something about Terry, and I was like, oh, haha, -ha, Terry tomato. Ooh, I want to put a little splash of vinegar in there. Do you know that the best caramelized onions are onions that you put in a pan in the oven and you just put them on like a really low temperature and you literally leave them in there for like 24 hours? I'm talking about the best fucking caramelized onions you will ever have in your life. Hurry up, I'm hungry now. Uh-oh, I burped. I better smoke. Oh, that's better. Hey, Magpie. No, you're not going to start that shit. <laughs> you don't mess around, dude. I've never had an admin that was so like good at their job and I don't mean like that my other admins aren't good at their job they're all excellent at their job but like barefoot is like well hi there barefoot's like got like just trigger finger hurry up I want to eat you Ooh, well, that's 
doing that thing, I should make some toast. I got some sourdough. I wonder if it would be good to put like a chopped up, I think I'm going to put chopped up boiled egg in my pasta too. Because the Italian Nana did it and so it might be good. Everything else she said was good, was is good, so I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to cut up an onion and, or a, an egg and put it in there as well. I want to make sourdough so good, so bad. Oh my god, that sourdough would be good with the pesto on it, wouldn't it? Pesto's good like that, isn't it? Should I put the toast and then the pesto on top of that and then heat that up? I want to make sourdough really bad. But I don't know how to make a starter, and I'm, like, really bad at remembering to do things like I'm supposed to. So the idea of trying to keep it fed and all that, I just don't know if I could manage without effing up. Okay, onions are done. Put your side for a little while. Let this toast. Don't be rude, please. I will share my food with you. Please don't be rude, though. Since I'm gonna share the food with the dog, I better get different pastas. I'll add some rose to it. Daggum dog, so spolt. Thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate that, but I don't really like to accept help from dudes. It usually ends up with, um, and this is nothing against you, not even an assumption that you'll be like this, but just because I'd rather stay out of trouble and out of a situation where a guy is expecting me to like sleep with them or be flirty and friendly and cutesy, um, I just don't, I just don't engage, you know, with that type of. In the, and I just don't. Just better be safe than sorry. I've been sorry too many times. Orly buddy, I'm trying here. I can't. I can't. I can't cook it any faster than it will cook. Please don't start barking at me. That makes me really feel the pressure. I don't like it. You're making me feel pressure. You're making me feel pressured. Just chill out. I'm going to give you some. I'm making some for you. Oh. You go here. We'll do the first flush. And then we'll use this for pasta water. Money, be easy. Orly, be easy, chill. Do a little salt in here. <laughs> no, it's my dog. 
I have a very human-like, very demanding dog. before I can go into town, I have a feeling. So I was gonna just make what I, my new favorite food of the right now and that is the reason it became my favorite food is because I've been watching these two girls on YouTube binge watching their channels and they are what I eat in a week at my Italian Nana's in Italy and like <clears throat> there I'm learning how to make one pot simple delicious healthy food I just want to like get ideas, you know, of things to make. So anyway, I saw this Nana, and she literally just took caramelized onions. Okay, that's it. Just caramelized onions, which is like butter, onions, and salt. And then she boiled pasta and, and mixed them together and put fucking Parmesan cheese on top. And I was just like, holy shit, I have so many onions right now. I can make that. And that looks easy. That's a one pot. You know, I mean, the hardest part is keeping the onions separate while this boils. And so I was like, dude, doing it. I'm going to make it. So I made it last night and I then made a mistake because I'm really sensitive stomach. I'm so the smell of cooking and everything, um, the dog barking gave me anxiety. And then like I drank some kefir because I was like so hungry. I was afraid I was going to get sick to my stomach. And the kefir just like took away my hunger. It was thick. It was exactly the amount of food I needed in order to stop feeling sick to my stomach. So I just like got neutrally hungry and almost averted the, like the food aversion because I was like, I don't even want it now. So I gave the dog his serving of pasta and then I just put it all together and figured I'll eat it later if I get in the mood. So then I was like, you know what? I want to eat this food. I don't want it to go bad because like I, you know, I really want to try this. So I decided I was going to smoke a bowl and then put on the Nana video. Not the necessarily the one that I watched with the food, but I just put on that video. And I literally, it was, I wasn't even in the, in the video five minutes before I was like, okay, I'm going to cook my pasta. So I reheated my pasta meal, added the Parmesan cheese, let the Parmesan cheese get a little crispy inside the pan and get bubbly and melty and boom, ate it. It was so good. I mean, it's just like, you know, you can use sugar, but like, I just didn't want to use sugar. There's so much sugar nat in, naturally in purple onions that you don't really need to. Here, 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 here. Come here. Right here. You, you're going to like totally fall. This is as good a place as any. There you go. You're not like on the edge anymore. There you go. Sorry, I had to help my cat. Glad the pot didn't start boiling because that would have boiled right over. Come on, pot. Do your stuff. I need more than one stove top. That would be great. I paid all this money for this fancy to the stove drop in stove top. Waited a year to get someone to cut the coal in the countertop for me. Finally got it installed. Can't find a damn propane hose to fit it. So I can't use my fancy fucking stove that I spent all that money on. All right, we're bubbling. Can we bubble a little more than that though? Oh, 
классно это колес. I am going as fast as I can. I'm only one person. I'm going! Oh, I swear to God. I'm just going to start ignoring you now. Mm-hmm. Mm, don't touch anything. Don't eat anything. Just smoke. Oh, my stomach's starting to hurt. See, this happens, like, right when I get to that. I need to eat, like, now, or else I'm going to get sick. How about I eat a piece of onion? Mmm. But I got to be careful, because I could lose my appetite very, very, very easily. I really want to drink that kefir. <laughs> Come on. You can just make it 13 more minutes, Heather. I am making uh, pasta with uh, topped with caramelized onions. And I just realized I have this pesto that I've literally been keeping right here on my counter so that I will remember to eat it. Because I wanted it. I bought it, you know, all that thing. So I'm going to add a little pesto on top as well, because why not? Do you see that it's steaming right here? I know you can see this. I'm on a stadium. The whole fucking neighborhood could see me. Trying to overboil so hard. Alright, I just can't use the lid, I think. It's causing too much chaos. There's apparently some kind of grease down here. I'm not interested in a fire, so let's just clean that up. bacon or some shit. Ooh, let's not do that. Alright, boil. Run, mahi, mahi. Or what is it? Free, mahi, mahi. Oh my god, Orly, come on, bro. Be cooler if you didn't. Fucking boiling water, Heather. Duh. Yeah, I am mocking you. Gorilla me. The minute I barked about him, he went. Smart ass. I'm making an awful lot of noise in there. Let's just move you. There we go. He's having a good time with dad, yes. His dad, I sent his dad this really cool, um, like I found a, uh, you know, like a homeschool activity. And it is penmanship, and he has to write in three different penmanships. He has to write in standard, uh, typeface, cursive, 
And then another, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's another, like, uh, it's another, like, doc, it's important for, like, being a smart document reader. And, uh, anyway, so, but he has to write the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in three different penmanships. And then I got him a book about the Revolutionary War that happened in 1776 or whatever, you know, in the fucking, when the U.S. went to war with... Britain for freedom and all that jazz, so I want him to know these things. Yes, but these are sentences that he will, that are, it's not like he's in, it's not the same, you know? He's not writing sentences for punishment, and it's not like a sentence of, like, mea culpa. It's not like a mea culpa, you know? Oh, thanks, Chelsea. I can't make water boil any faster. I'm going to go get him some, I'm going to give him some egg and then I'll take half of it. The Italian nonas say that this and prosciutto go inside of lasagna. So I will... Take her word for it. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Oh no! Okay, hold on. God damn it, the fucking egg fell outside of the fence. He can't reach it. Now he's gonna bark. Here, here, here. I'll have to get that one for him later. Hopefully he doesn't bark his fucking brains out. <sighs> it fucking fell. Wrong place. for his dad no complaints he sits down he gets all his fucking work done no problem no complaints no arguments he does it fucking willingly it is the most frustrating thing ever though his dad did so his dad it like is really realizing how awesome like unschooling is when you like tailor suit your education to fit what the child's interested in and then use that for like teaching other subjects and so um he's been help have he, Elliot's been taking part cars lately like uh die cast cars. Elliot loves to take those apart, the big ones, and just unscrew every part, spray it all, look through it. I posted a video about it. But anyway, so he, uh, his dad has now been using that as an opportunity to, to teach him other things, you know? So that's been really nice. Okay, the pasta is done. Let's take a little bit of this pasta water and add it to this.
Oh, 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 oh. Separate the dog's pasta first. Where's the dog? Pumpkin protein. Mushroom blend for the guy and the mom, and then ricotta cheese. Ricotta's in mine as well. Okay. Mm. Some nutritional yeast, because why not? It's really weird and light colored lately. I don't know what's going on with this nutritional yeast. the boy. I'll be right back. This will be easier if I just don't try to take my phone with me. Dog eats better than anybody else, I tell you what. caramelized onion and all the other goodies.
Ooh, it smells really good. Oh, it's not ricotta. It's freaking eggs. Duh. I'm like, why won't this mix in? <gasps> the yolk is like breaking down and becoming part of the sauce too. Oh. Oh. God damn. Okay, this is really good. Okay, it keeps falling out of the pan though. I just want that like Parmesan to get like a little melty and like crusty. So that the pan has some good stuff on it. So that when I move this to the pan, now, boom, bop, da bop, let that bread get that burny goodness, cheesiness, and pestoiness all over it. Pesto. Bad lighting. It looks like shit. Looks yellowy, but it's delicious. Wow. Oh yeah, the cheese is burning on oh, yeah. you. Yeah. Clean you later. Automatic light on. Ooh, it's nice and toasty warm in my house from the wood burning stove. <sighs> Probably it is a bowl from Walmart. Uh, I got it from the single mama who was living on here for a little while. She left it. It's really good, but now my stomach is hurting and I'm like full. This happens to me every time I make food.
<laughs> Whatever works, you know. Whatever works to motivate you, Terry. I literally fed you. Mm. Um, the consensus, the consensus is in boiled egg is delicious in pasta. Some Italian Nana would ever steer you wrong. Dang, awesome. My pair. Parachute pants went right in my bowl, but other than that, it's a good table scape cover thingy. Dude, the egg is so good. It's got, I cooked it in the last of the sauce residue that was in the pan. We've got like bits of burny pesto y cheesiness. Dude, caramelized egg is so good in pasta. I can't believe it. I know I'm not a lesbian, thanks. I'm in Oregon. Dude, that chick from Apocalypto is hot. The mom with her cute pregnant belly. She looks so good. Take that as a compliment. Oh, wait. Yeah, right? Was Apocalypto... Was that the one that's the Mel Gibson or the John Travolta one? <laughs> and Egregore is kind of like AI in a way. like spiritual AI. It's like, say I have a cult. And in that cult, we worship a certain ideal or whatever, right? Well, that ideal, like, takes form and becomes its own, like, living, kind of thinking, acting. It's like a computer program. You, like, program spirit. It's like a kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you make a program, but with magic. I don't know what else to call it. Metaphysics. And then it basically just goes out and do this, does that thing. You have to look into it to get more of a description. I can't give you the right one. It's been too long since I read the book. Oh my god, I almost just put my food right in the pan. I almost put my food right in that fucking pan that I put water in.
Yeah, I cooked it. It's toasty. But it's sourdough, so it's already got like a chewy texture to it. I'm trying to force it down. I should... I think I'm just going to give up on the bread because my stomach is hurting. It's acclimate weather. It's really nice. Exactly barefoot. Exactly. I made it. I did it. Exactly, Fairy. Life is all about... Bad shit is always going to happen. Shit's not going to always go our way. Life can be very difficult in that way. Ow, I bit my lip. But, if you are... If you decide to be unfazed by things... That when bad things happen, you don't have like an extreme reaction to it one way or the other. Then shit won't bother you. Bad shit's always going to happen. The key is how you react to it. Oh, Heather. God damn it. I remember a time not too long ago when I literally couldn't sit down without having to get back up again. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Probably you should walk over on the other side though because I'm gonna smoke this, okay? So it's probably not in your best interest to sit right there.
What a good protector man. He doesn't get hair in me. I'm trying to do something right here. My cat and I burped at the same time. <laughs> that sounds like someone's here. That specific bark he usually only makes unless he sees someone but he hasn't like that whoever if he saw someone they haven't come close yet because if they got close he would make an escalating type bark instead of just kind of staying the same whatever it is that hasn't approached Thank you, I am. No. Gypsy Rose left her husband and went back to her ex-boyfriend this week. Thank you, Orly. Good boy. Sure enough, there was a person. <sighs> yes, Chelsea. He tries every day. You can try every day all you want. I will always appreciate the super chats. But just remember, just because you give a girl money, it doesn't mean she owes you anything. You're just giving me your money. Made it clear. There's a lot of other girls out there on the internet that would take you up on your offer in a heartbeat, you know? There are girls out there who like to be sexual creatures and hedonists, but I don't. It's not my thing. I know. But $2 adds up, you know, every day. You know, let's say six months down the line, you know. And you're like, you know, Heather. Hold on a second, I have to answer something. Oh, there, yeah. You know, because he's gay, dot, dot, dot. Puff. Daddy. Dot, dot, dot. Puffy, dot, dot, dot. Very on brand for 90s gayness. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, we gotta be careful, man, especially girls in our youth. 
I just, as a general rule of thumb, blanket, I don't accept help from men, you know? And I make it, like, I don't, I don't pretend that I'm interested in a man for money. I don't do sexy stuff for money. I don't do conversation. Jeez, oh, Pete. What a nightmare that was to get this back. I have freaking my Starlink. It's nine o'clock. That was weird. That was weird. That was weird. It just took me out of the chat and made me click resume again. Weird. Anyway, uh, my Starlink, it's nine o'clock. My Starlink went to sleep, so I had to quickly turn it back on. Um, but anyway, so what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Ew, no. No, I don't like the glorification of any drug use. It's gross. And, oh yeah, I was talking about men, yeah. So, I just, as a blanket, I don't accept help from men because it always ends up every single time that I have ever just been like, no, this guy's obviously so nice. Like, look, he would never do the thing that every other guy has done to me. And, in fact, yes, that man has turned out to do it. So, every man who has come to help me other than the one, the, so if you see someone helping me, it's because they're the exception to the rule here recently, but that's the Curtis, the old man. But um, he's the only one that I'll accept help from that's a man because he is, uh, he's old and he's like past that kind of stuff. He's he's really kind and old. He's a community guy. He does like, he his job is to do community work. So he's a safe one. Um, and he's proven himself to be safe multiple, multiple, multiple times. But every time I ever accept help from a man, it always ends up with either them, like, subtly touching me in a way that is a little bit, like, violates my boundaries and makes me uncomfortable. Like, maybe they walk by me and kind of, like, touch my waist or something or, like, try to, you know, like, guide me by my small of my back or something like that. Or, you know, like, just obvious, like, like just small, intimate gestures. Or they will flat out say it, like, hey, you know, you know, we're two adults. This is exactly why I don't get fucking... I will just rather... Dude, the reason that I'm living... I've been living out in the woods for three years with no running water and, like, all the, all the things to have running water, but I just don't have it put together is because I don't know how to do it and I... I can't trust man to come help me without fucking trying to have sex with me or being disgusting and rude. And I'm afraid to hire a stranger or accept help from anyone on the internet because I don't want strangers on the internet knowing where the fuck I live. You know what I mean? So it's not something I can just like, I have to hire a company. I can't just hire some rando off the internet. You know? So yeah, I just as a as a as a principle, just a life principle, I just don't take help from dudes, you know? Just to just to be safe. Oh wow, there's like a ton of comments down here that I didn't even know were there. Um, am I Mike Jr.? No, it's not the way I'm presenting myself because I'm literally presenting myself in exactly the same way. The problem is, is that today when you're engaged with conversation, you make eye contact with someone and you're genuinely interested in what they have to say, that is mistaken as flirting. So I'm just, a, I just like talking to people and I am genuinely interested in what they have to say when I'm having a conversation with them. So it like, it's not, it's not my fault. I'm just a fucking personable person. I mean, the, the flirting that I'm meaning is direct, like just direct uh, asking me, you know, for sexual favors, so. Oh, 
Um, I have, I have, I think, is it on TikTok, Magpie? Because I think I have heard something about that. But um, there's like a few different movements like that kind of trying to start up and everybody's kind of like scattered. Yeah, and Terry, like, like Terry says, so like, and especially if I'm having so, if like I do, I intentionally dress modestly when I know a man is going to be around me. I do not show skin. I do not like do suggestive things like bend over. Or I, I make sure to be extremely careful about like how I'm coming off. I am, don't want to be mistaken as flirting now. Coco, I press the button that says no 18 and under. I select two things. My advanced settings says my content is not appropriate for anyone under the age of 18. And then I have to select yes or no every time I go live, whether is this, is this suitable for kids? No. And so why the hell are there kids here? At nine o'clock, I'm on the Pacific Northwest. So if you're in, if you're in the, at the fucking West Coast, it's at least 9 p.m. So you need to go the fuck to bed is what you need to do. If anyone can't hear the word fuck, you need to go to sleep now. It's your bedtime. But yeah, no, I just, as a, as a, for my own safety, because of the lifestyle that I live and the, you know, the way that I, the ways that I am vulnerable, I opt to not have strangers at my home and I opt not to, to have dudes around that I don't like, I just, what's the point of having dudes around? Like if they do physical labor, they either want money or sex and I don't have either of those things. There's nobody who's just going to be nice and just help. I've been here for three years, and if they were the people were going to come, they would. I'm a very resourceful person. So the goal is to build my YouTube up, become at the very least make a so at what I consider to be a living wage is different than what everyone else considers to be a living wage and what I consider to be wealthy and like financially abundant is different than most people's idea of financial abundance so I want to get to where I want to get like my numbers are much lower I my needs are much less than most on a month to month basis. So I am, I'm ready to, to have enough money at, left over at the end of the month that I can start developing my hey, life. You know, better. let's look together. I'm tired and like, I'm tired of living, like roughing it. I'm exhausted. I can't do it anymore. Oh shit, now they're shutting down the news organizations in Israel that are giving news to the outside world.
this lady just got busted for running a 10 year, 12 year long uh, theft ring with Ulta and Sephora. She had girls of all ages, teenagers though, of all ages, uh, like between 12 and 16, I think, um, going to Sephora, Ulta, and Lens Crafters of all places and stealing a bunch of shit and then taking that and shipping it to her and she like was doing it for so long she made millions of dollars doing this theft ring i am i don't hate men at all actually i love men i just don't like the way that society has bamboozled men into behaving um i think it's really sad and so my my i'm not here for my pleasure okay so getting laid and having a, an intimacy and stuff like that just isn't important to me. I am here to guide my son through this life and help him become the absolute best version of himself that he can be and be the most successful version of himself that he can be, the most independent and self-sufficient version of himself that he can be. So I'm not focused on dating or any of that stuff. Maybe I will may, when my lifestyle changes and my like I'm not caring for a small child, I may be interested in dating. But right now, my life is his. He's the only man for me right now. And so I just am not interested in, I don't want to have sex with someone. I don't want to use my womanly guile to get ahead. I'm all, I fully open, even honestly, even now, I'm open to meeting a guy and falling in love or falling in friendship and then developing a relationship with them eventually. But I'm not actively out here like on dating apps trying to find some fucking man. And I don't want to meet a man on the internet anyways. I just don't. I would, I would prefer that I like, I go somewhere and like, uh, I have to like, order something or buy something or hire a service of some kind. And then it puts me in the same place as someone who has the same lifestyle, mentality, goals, aspirations. I'm going to, I want to like, I want to meet someone through like the things I do in life. I don't want to meet someone on the internet and have some kind of predetermined expectation that we may end up dating or having sex. I don't want that. I just want to like meet someone and then like develop, hang, uh, trade social media accounts and then just watch each other for a while, chat now and again, develop a friendship, maybe go do something cool, but with no pressure for anything. I don't want that pressure. I want to have the next man that I'm intimate with will be the last man that I am ever intimate with. And the only man that I will ever be intimate with again, I will have a solid friendship with long before any kind of romantic de shit develops and that's just what I'm that's what I want for myself I have boundaries I have things that I want and I need and my priorities are not for my own self-serving needs like I don't I don't care about getting laid I don't care I don't need it that bad I could go without it I mean it is what it is like I don't need someone to hold me at night I don't need someone to hold my hand I'm fucking good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got this shit. And I've had nobody but myself to rely on my entire life. So, <clears throat> and every relationship, because I'm strong and independent and, like, uh, you know, focused on, like, my achieving my goals, I want a person like that, too. But what it seems like is, and as, an evident, as, and as is evidenced by my ex-husband, Men who are a little bit lower on the testosterone are the ones who are attracted to me because I am more like a mommy to them because I am a take charge, get shit done. And they know that they, uh, I will do their laundry. I will fold, I will fold that shit. I will cook their food. You know what I mean? And I, that's the kind of men who seem to be the most attracted to me. And, and so like, I am busy working on myself to get out, to stop being the type of person who attracts those types of people. Like, I don't want to be in a relationship with anyone really until I become fully the person who I want to be with, you know? And until I, and I, until I attract the type of people who I want to attract, then I'm not going to date really. And just, it is what it is. You know, I'm just, I'm good.
the way that if you ask any married couple who are happily married, I don't mean the ones that stayed together and cuss each other out when, you know, I don't mean those, those ones that secretly hate each other and stay together anyway. I'm talking about the ones that are, stay in love and have a good relationship. That's because they are friends. They do things together. They have a, a, a tight connection and uh, they respect each other. You know, these are people who have been through shit together and have come through it together and still advocate for one another and have each other's backs. That's the relationships that last the test of time. So until, until society starts, uh, well, until the men who are my age to also start to realize that it's going to, that, that, that it's, so it takes a lot of self-work and they're finished with that self-work. I'm just not even, you know, I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm good. And I really just rather not. I love, I am, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm not gay. <laughs> that's for sure. I do not attracted to females. I'm definitely straight, but men are just like kind of not really interested in being, uh, a provider and a leader and, you know, a, a, a good, like good to kids, patient with kids, you know, that's what I'm seeking. So until I can find, until I have, you know, until, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking. So like, if it ever comes along, that'll be great. But if it doesn't, I'm good, you know? I'm totally fucking content and happy, and I make myself happy. I don't really want any, honest to God, dude, the, the idea of someone being in my space, like, touching my shit and moving my stuff around and putting things where I don't want it, and then, like, I have to, like, move my shit, like, all their space. What is, like, like how, how could I live in this space with two people's stuff? I couldn't even. Like, ish. You know, the only reason that I would like feel in any way inclined to do man things like right now would be is if, you know, it is like because I, I'm i in willing to use my womanly guile to like get things done, like built and, you know, like say if I was to, if I was, if I had a man, I would 100% travel in this bus, but I'm not going to do that all by myself. It's just too much. It's too big. It, I love this bus, but. It's, it's, I, it, this is a family bus. This isn't a single woman alone and her kid bus. I need something a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, something I can kind of like move around a little bit more stealthy, or I need to get myself an RV and a nicer pickup truck. Um, yeah, Josh does every, like Josh, he's, he doesn't, uh, he's not like, he doesn't grow like tons of weed or anything like that. No. He's only, uh, he has like one plant maybe, you know, he's, I don't, he doesn't even have like, what's the legal limit, I don't think. Cause he's, you know, he's not really, he's not trying, he doesn't make money. He just really grows just so that he can have like really good weed because he's got that eye disease. And so he's been trying to like, um, kind of tailor suit a strain that is, helps his eyes the most. See, Aiden, if you could get your at your head out of your own ass, you would realize you're preaching to the choir, but whatever. Anyway, I don't think anybody should work a nine to five. I think that um I think a man should own his own fucking business and have a trade skill. And then the the woman refer defers to her man for all things. Like I am a I am an old fashioned housewife. I believe that like the wife should 
like a, like ask her husband th things and like rely on him to like handle things and not be so independent and dominating and bossy. I honestly think that one of the worst things to happen in the United States was when women got the right to vote. I am very, very, very modest in my fucking conservative in conservative in my like my relational beliefs, but I don't, uh, you know, that's my personal life. And here I am all by myself because I don't get what I want. I married a guy who has low testosterone and I had to be the mother of this man. It made me like get so much, so in my masculine that I, I haven't been able to like, to be fully in my feminine at all. Because I have been having to like make decisions and like just do all the disciplining of the child and do all the physical labor. Like instead of just being able to like become my best, most inflow version of myself, which is when I get to cook all day and clean all day and sew things and fucking garden and, you know, do animal feed chores and stuff like that. Like I love all that shit, but I don't like doing all that shit and having to make all the money and having to do all the building, and having to do all the parenting, and all the things, and having to do all the driving into the everywheres. I, it's just like, it's th this life, doing off-grid homesteading is the most beautiful, wonderful life, but it's really not realistic for one little woman all by herself who doesn't have a clue what she's doing. And I think that as a woman, we can be mostly in our feminine. We can be our best mama version. We can be our best mom self. We can be our best wife self when we don't have to worry about like where our fucking like next meal is going to come from. When we don't have to worry about where, where the roof over our head and we don't have to worry about like the things that the husband should realistically take care of. That being said, I will always, and even if I ever end up in like, I'm, I, I won't because I'm too old to have any more children, but, um, so that will never be my life. But, um, you know, like I would struggle not, I like making money. Money motivates the shit out of me. So I am, I'm very entrepreneurial and I like to have like, right now I have, I think six or seven different income streams. Like they're, they're, none of them are making me wealthy or anything. Like I'm, I mean, YouTube will maybe eventually get me there, but, um, all of my little income streams, I make like between, you know, like maybe like a hundred to a thousand dollars a month. And, you know, but bet between all of them, I almost make enough to fucking survive. But eventually, you know, I'm going to, eventually I'm going to be making a shit ton of money on this YouTube. And I'm going to be using, once I have my basic needs cared for and my son's basic needs cared for, like we're good and we're able to take care of ourselves without like struggle, then I'm going to start investing. What I want to do ultimately is I want to, um, I want to help other single moms get either, like I wanted to do a, a, a single mom community here on my property, but since I, I'm just no one wants to help me thresh the wheat, which AKA like while it's still raw land, build it up into a functioning homestead. Nobody wants to help me do the hard work. People want to come and enjoy it once it's done. Plenty of people want to join the homestead once it's done and ready to go, but nobody wants to help like do the work. So I'm going to go get myself back into a condensed life that I can manage on my own without any help from anyone else. And then when I'm, my shit is situated, when I'm good on the YouTube and I'm making money, I'm going to start buying like vans or buses, RVs, whatever. And then I'm going to, I'm going to find a business partner at some point, someone who can build things that I can actually work with and pay a, like a living wage to. And I want to make vans, buses, RVs, whatever. And I want to convert them so that they are mom slash kid friendly. So there's like bunks, different areas for kids, because all of these fucking RVs, like the only ones that are kid friendly are the absolute most expensive ones. They're over forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And it's absolutely ridiculous. H hardly any of the bus conversions that I'm looking at online to like replace my bus, because I want to sell my bus. I'm selling my property. So I'm going to walk away with probably like $65,000. I don't want to 
buy another bus that's not converted in the sense that like it needs to have all it needs to have kids space and there's not that many there's just not that many that are converted for with kids in mind and that's very frustrating there needs to be more anyway so once i do that once i do the conversion so i'm going to start a, a non-profit i don't know if i'm going to like officially offic officiate myself or not because i don't really want the fucking government's taking like hand in what i'm doing but ultimately i'm just gonna like not make a profit and I'm going to give away these buses, vans, whatever I can. I just want to get, I just want to help get single moms in a place where they can at the very least take care of themselves. And if they can ideally, so there's, while I'm doing this simultaneously, there are other people out there that are doing mom communities, mom unions, like what I'm trying to do here. It's caught on since I started this three years ago, there have actually places have sprung up. I either took their inspiration from me on TikTok or whatever the case may be. But there have been people who have in the last three years sprung up with other mom communities like this. And so if I can help moms get a little house on wheels, they can go to any one of these mom communities on in the country, you know, if they if they if they get the money just to go. Uh, no, I don't need help building stuff. Thank you. I am. I'm not anywhere near that pl stage. Not even close right now. Right now, my my focus is itemizing everything I own, selling what I can sell, donating what I can donate, throwing out what I can throw out, keeping what I can keep, selling my bus, selling, getting rid of this property, having Roxanne buy me the fuck out, and then just getting the heck back on the road. I need to be able to buy a little piece of property as well. Ooh. All right, so I think I'm gonna go to bed. I wish I had some fucking ice cream. Oh well, I'll see you later, potatoes. Good night, barefoot, my darling. I love you. Goodbye in London. Good night, Carly. Who else? Who else? Who else? Good night, I am. Yeah, good night, Keith. Night, Michael. Later, later, later.